the American system of hypocrisy is the name of our class today. All right. Uh, Nashawn, you read him, correct? Yes, sir. All right. Um, we're going to start with the book of Sirach, chapter 2, verse 1. And what I want to talk about is us coming into this truth. We're coming out of the world of, of, of evil and temptations. We're coming out of a world where there's many trains of thought, where there's all kinds of uh, uh, philosophies and temptations that's trying to pull us away from the commandments. And that's really what it's about. So let's start reading. Let's just get the ball rolling. Sirach, Sirach chapter 2 and 1. Come on. Sirach chapter 2 and verse 1. My son, if thou come to serve the Lord. If thou come, brothers and sisters, because all, although it's saying son here, son is ref referencing the man, but the men and the women go through temptation, okay? So read it again. So when we read this, uh, although it's written in a masculine form, the Bible is speaking to men and women. The only time when it's making reference that it's speaking specifically to man is when it deals with things particular to man and not women and vice versa. When the Bible speaks about the daughters of Sarah or, the, you know, things of that nature, then it is speaking directly to the sisters, okay? If it says, for instance, um, um, you, ye are gods, but ye shall die like men, that's speaking directly to the men. But when you read words like my son, although this is a conversation that's being spoken from parent to son, the 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 uh, the directions that's being said to the son also apply to women. OK, if if we are going to come and serve the Lord, let us prepare ourselves for temptation. That ain't just a, that's not just a commandment for the men. That's a commandment for the women as well. So you will understand my point in that. Read, read again. Sirach chapter two and verse one. My son, if thou come to serve the Lord, prepare thy soul for temptation. So we need to really think about that because when we come into the truth, we're happy. You know, the Bible talks about the four different types of Israelites that's going to come through the door. Meaning the, 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 when I say the four types of Israelites, I'm talking about the, uh, the parable about the sower and the seeds. How many of y'all know what I'm talking about when I say that? The sower and the seed. Uh, that's in Mark, the fourth chapter. Can I get there real quick to just, just speed through it? Because I saw a lot of hands didn't go up. How many of y'all have not, do not do not know about the parable of the sower and the seeds? Hands up. Okay, so I see a few. Let me just skim through it real quick so that you'll know what I'm talking about as I make reference to Sirach chapter 2 and 1. Mark chapter 4. Oh, no. Now, Mark. I think, well... I it is. I think there is one in Mark. Cause it, I got you. You got I, me? Yes, sir. Okay. Mark Read. chapter 4, verse 15. And these are they by the wayside. Okay. What's the, verb, what's the couple of verses before that? Verse 12. What's 13 say? Verse 13. And he said unto them, know ye not this parable? Okay. So he's talking, to, he's get, Christ is giving, he's getting ready to break down parables to the disciples. So read the 12 verse. I see he was going to start there, right? Verse 12. Come on. Mark chapter 4 and verse 12, that seeing they may see and not perceive, and hearing they may hear and not understand. So the question was about, Christ had told them about, a, he had told them about the parable of the sower and the seeds. That's what he was saying. And he was making the point that the disciples didn't understand. So Christ was going to explain it to them. And that's why I'm starting here. Everybody's with me? Read. Lest at any time they should be converted and their sins should be forgiven them. So the, 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 this part of the Bible is heavy, even though I didn't want to go into that, but uh, the Most High is making the point that some of our people ain't meant to get this. He said that he did not, because the question was, why are you speaking to them in parables? And Christ is making the point, the reason why I'm doing this is because I don't mean for everybody to get it. Because some of these people got to pay for their evil because they they're not going to change. That's the reason why in another part of the scriptures he said, let their Bible be, be a snare and a trap that they shall fall and be taken. That's why he's saying that. But he said, but unto you it is given. These are the people that the Most High is trying to gather up, those that's going to obey and endure the temptations. Okay? Everybody's with me so far? Read. Mark chapter 4, verse 13. And he said unto them, Know ye not this parable? Don't you know this parable? Go ahead. And how then will ye know all parables? Go the ahead. The sower soweth the word. Now he's getting ready to break it. He's breaking it down. The sower... So if the word, the sower 
is Christ. Christ is planting. That's what it, the word so means to plant. Read. And these are and they. the word is the word is the commandments. This is what's going to change us to cause us to repent. Okay, go ahead. And these are they by the wayside. And these are the Israelites by the wayside. So when we go out and teach the brothers in the camps, teach it. And we're teaching the Bible. And the brothers and sisters come around and they're listening. And they are the ones that stand by the wayside listening to when the truth come out. Listen to when the commandments come out. Some of them listen, some don't. Okay, read that again. And these are they by the wayside. And these are they by the wayside. Where the word is sown. Where the word is preached, like the Bible says in uh, Proverbs. It says, uh, speak in the chief place of concourse. He said, she, she said, wisdom crieth without. She uttereth her voice in the streets. And then, then it says, how long, ye simple ones, will you love simplicity? Okay, so that's in Proverbs, the first chapter. So this word is being taught to the Israelites that are standing. Read that again. And these are they by the wayside. And these are the Israelites by the wayside. Go ahead. Where the word is sown. Where the word of God, the truth is being brought to you. Go ahead. But when they have heard. But the minute the Israelites that are standing by, when they heard this truth, listen now. Satan cometh immediately. Satan comes immediately. You standing there, you listening, and all of a sudden, here come your friends popping up. Hey, man, what you doing? Yo, we supposed to go do this. We supposed to go do that. While you listening, trying to get the word. Or Big Butt Betty come by, who you ain't seen in five years. Man, she's fine. All of a sudden, she's fine that day. You understand? And then the next thing you know, she said some awesome loud rap music played. And boom, boom, boom. Boom, boom, boom. Boom, boom, boom. Oh, man, that's my song. Whoop, you gone. That's Satan. Some some knucklehead, and I call him a knucklehead. A knucklehead will come up while, you, while you're listening, and it will come up and tell you about Dr. Buzzard. You don't need to follow those commandments. Them Nick Rose is crazy. Come follow me or whatever. Or some, some, some Edomite will come with Christianity and come telling you, talking about the blood of Jesus. He ain't tell you about the, you've been born all the way up to this time here. You ain't, learned the, you ain't learned about the blood of Jesus. But now, all of a sudden, you're trying to get the word. Now, all of a sudden, here you come with the blood of Jesus, as if these people really care about us. But the point is, the, ob the objective of all of them is to pull you away from this gospel. Read that again. Satan cometh immediately. That's what that is, Satan. You got to recognize that that's Satan. Satan who's in the girl. I'm talking about the one that's trying to pull you. Satan is in the music. The brother's turning the music up. Satan is in anything that's trying to distract you from hearing the word of the Most High. That's Satan. Read it again. Satan cometh immediately. Satan cometh immediately. It is amazing. No matter where we set up, think about it. If we were selling dope, Satan don't come. If we was about pushing this, saying that, Music, whatever, Satan never comes. But the minute you bring out the word of the most high, all of a sudden, all kinds of distractions. Haven't y'all noticed that? Read that again. Satan cometh when? Satan cometh immediately. Immediately. Go ahead. And take his Because there's war going on in the spirit world when you were repenting. Th that's the reason why it says immediately. See, I'm going a little deeper now. It's just saying you just standing there. You actually waking up, the Bible says that the angels rejoice when any one of our sons and daughters repent. So there's a, there's a reaction that's going on in the spirit world, and Satan is going immediately to intercept that. But if you're in a whole club, Satan ain't coming in there because Satan is already there. Mm. Satan ain't got to come. you in the house of Satan. If you're in the Baptist church, you're in the house of Satan. <laughs> if you're in anything else outside these commandments, you're already in the house of Satan. I want y'all to understand that. But when y'all are trying to get yourselves right, Satan said, wait a minute, one of my sheep is getting away, meaning you. So let me go immediately and unplug him before he gets caught up. And that's the word they will use, before they get caught up into righteousness. Read. And taketh away the word that was sown in their hearts. And what does Satan do? Say something that caused you to forget about what the brothers was just going over. Okay, so that's the first group. So that group never even make it in it never even make it in here. So we was talking about I said I was going to go through this here. This is what I'm talking about here. This first group gets taken out before they even get to even understand what the commandments are about. That's the first group. Y'all all right? Read on. Verse 16. 
and these are they likewise, which are sown on stony ground. Now, this, this is the second group. Likewise, meaning also, these are they which are set on stony ground. Stony ground, when you think about how plants grow in stones. Y'all ever see those things? I keep talking about it, like these aquariums, these things. What they call it? I, keep, I, I never could remember that word. But it, it's, the, the, the plants grow real quick because there's no soil and the roots don't get down deep. And they sprout up real quick. That's how brothers, that when they, they made it past the campsite, now they're in here. Now, now they are so quick to like, let me just memorize every scripture, but not really apply it. Okay, read that again. And these are they likewise, which are sown on stony ground. They're sown on stony ground. The words of God is sown on stony ground. The stony ground is their mind. The, the word ain't really taking hold. That's what it's saying, because he's, he's not really serious about it. He's just excited. I'm an Israelite. I'm going to get the kingdom. All that. White man is Esau. We're the Jews. Very happy. But when it comes to the endurance, that's where the trial going to come in at. Read that again. And these are they likewise, which are sown on stony ground. These are they likewise, which are sown on stony ground. Go ahead. Who, when they have heard the word. When they have heard the word. Immediately receive it with gladness. That's the part I was talking about. They immediately receive it with gladness because they're happy. We're Israel. We're the Jews. We're going to get the kingdom. White man's the devil. I'm going to get my nation back. All that. So they're happy. Right, read. And have no root in themselves. That's why it says stony ground. The roots don't, the root meaning you have to be rooted and study. Have to apply the commandments. But they have no root in themselves because they were just happy to get in it. Happy to call themselves Israel. Let me get the shirts. Let me get to this. Let me get to that. But they don't really uh, prove themselves in this gospel. Go ahead. And so endure, but for a time. They only stay for a little while. After they, endure, they endure for a time. Go ahead. Afterwards. Afterwards. When affliction or persecution arises. When the commandments are trying them. That's what that's talking about there. Like the Bible says, for the, for the uh, discipline shall walk with you by crooked ways. The commandments is trying to walk with you to build you up so that you can endure. But a lot of people don't take that properly. When that trial comes, they run. When that trial come, they give up. That's what it's talking about. That's the reason why they endure for a time. Go ahead. For the word's sake. The, what did, read that statement again. When affliction or persecution ariseth for the word's sake. When, a, when affliction and persecution cometh upon you because of the Bible. Now you're bringing it around your family members. Now you go home and you try to deal with your wife with it. You try to deal with your husband with it. Now all of a sudden they're saying, listen, man, we ain't going to make it. You coming on with this here? Mm. We, we're done. And that's when brothers or sisters fall out. They say, you know what, I, ain't, I, thought, I, was, I thought I was about this, but now you're you bringing in the heaviness. I don't know. And now I got to walk. That's the second group. Y'all all right? Read. Immediately, they are offended. They are offended because they got to hate one and love the other. They got to make a choice. They got to find something wrong with the Bible. King James this. something. They got to make up something. Hate group. They gotta make up any they gotta make up something to get out of following the discipline. Go ahead. Mark chapter four and verse eighteen. And these are they which are sown among thorns. This is the third group. These are they which are sown among thorns. Go ahead. Such as hear the word. They hear the word. So they made it past the campsite. They've they've been inside the truth now. They've been in the classrooms and all that. Go ahead. And the cares of this world. And the deceitfulness of riches. Some, some of them have ties to money. Some of them might be tied into the sports world or music or whatever. And deeply tied in it. And now that deep, now that, that career, whatever they were doing, is causing them to break the Sabbath. Listen, I need you to run up and down the gridiron on basketball and all that, football. Or deal with the dance club on the weekends and all that. We've had those kinds of cases. And then they have to make a choice again. Do I deal with this or... or do I uh, go in the way of my lust? Okay, y'all understand this? So that's, so that's three types. Go ahead, read on. And the lust of other things. Read that statement again. And the cares of this world. And the cares of this world. We're in the third group now. The third group is the group that we're going to really run into. The second and the third group. The first group ain't even going to make it in here. 
The second group going to make it in here, and the third group going to make it in here. But the second and the third group is going to be here for a while. Because when the persecutions and things come up, they're going to leave. Okay, read that statement again. And the cares of this world. And the cares of this world. And the deceitfulness of riches. And the what? Deceitfulness of riches. The, the deceiving riches. The deceitfulness of riches. Do what? And the lust of other things. And the lust of other things. These other things can be anything. That's why it's leaving it vague like that. And the lust of other things. Because I, I don't know what your lust might be. But whatever it is, if it causes you to fall out of this truth, that's what Christ was talking about. That's why it's left like that. And the lust of other things. Here, here we are trying to figure out. I can't figure out all the different things that's going on in your heads. None of us can. But the most high knows. And the lust of other things. That could be anything. What happened to the brother? I don't know. He just left. Okay. Well, did everybody find out why? No, he just bounced. It was something. We just didn't know about it. The lust of other things. Go ahead. And the lust of other things enter in. Enter in. Go ahead. Choke the word. It choke the word. Choke the commandments. Go ahead. And it becometh unfruitful. And the commandments becometh unfruitful. In other words, nobody sees the commandments in you anymore. That's when they end up on Facebook, uh, TikTok, and the rest of these things out here. Mm -hmm. Done. Talking smack. Crazy. Or just full-blown madness. Read. And these are they which are sown on good ground. That's the fourth group. That's the group that we all want to make it in. And these are they, the Israelites that came through. Uh, one, two, three, you want to make it to this group here. And these are they which are what? Sown or on good ground. Sown on good ground. Go ahead. Such as hear the word. They heard the word. And receive it. We receive the word. And bring forth fruit. And bring forth the commandments. Some 30-fold. Some 30-fold. Some 60. 60 and some a hundred. And hundredfold. This is where the Most High begins to multiply your blessings and your talents and everything else. And that's how the nation moves forward. So the Most High's got the number. Y'all all right? Okay. Now, so did that, ex did that give you a basic understanding of the, when I said the four groups of Israelites, this is what I was talking about. All right. Let's go back to uh, Sirach chapter 2. Sirach chapter 2 and verse 1. My son, if thou come to serve the Lord. Prepare thy soul for temptation. Prepare your soul for temptation. So when we come to serve the Lord, we have to endure past all those groups that I talked about, and we want to get to the point of where we are in that fourth group, where, where, the, where the fruits could be manifested. Go ahead. Set thy heart aright. The Most High says set your mind aright, set, meaning discipline yourselves to endure in this truth, and don't falter. Don't give up. Like our old, like our elders used to tell us, no matter how hard it gets, never give up. And sometimes these trials can be very rough. They can be very rough. And I'm not talking to you from inexperience. I've experienced some, some rough trials. Go ahead. And constantly endure. And constantly endure. No matter what, endure. And make not haste in time of trouble. And don't run. When the, tr when the trials come up, that's what that part means there. Don't run. When the persecution and afflictions come, don't run. That's the point. Go ahead. Verse 3, cleave unto him. Cleave unto the discipline and the commandments of the Most High. Go and, ahead. And depart not away. And don't run. Don't depart from these commandments. That thou mayest be increased at the last end. Why? Because we're looking for a blessing at the end. Okay. So now I'm gonna stop there. Now let's go back to the go back to uh, the Bible. Give me the book of James. Okay, uh, read Sirach one. No, we read that. Give me James now. James one and twelve. We're gonna start with the twelve verse. So I'm I'm bringing these things out before I get to the American system of hypocrisy for a reason. Okay, because as you're coming in this truth and as you're trying to endure, not only when I talked about Satan trying to prevent you from learning this. There's a lot of satanic things out there that's trying to prevent you from enduring in this truth. And I'm going to show you some. Okay? So that's the reason why I'm going through this. I'm laying out the first steps of showing you how we got from being a Negro, meaning in the mind. I'm, regardless of what tribe we come out of, the Negro is a mentality. So we're coming out of that mentality and trying to get ourselves right because the most I said, you're the Israelites. We're trying to come out of that foolishness. And, that, and as we're coming out, out of that foolishness, our enemies who look to exploit 
who look to dominate and to keep us in continual slavery, they don't want to ever see what they call their slaves waking up. That's the point. Y'all all right? Read. James chapter 1 and verse 12. Blessed is the man that endureth temptation. The Bible says, blessed is the man that make it to that fourth group, that make it to that, to, to that good ground. Read it again. Blessed is the man that endureth temptation. Blessed is the man and woman that endureth temptation. Endure the temptation. Don't run when the temptation come up. Endure it. Understand the purpose of it. Go ahead. For when, for when he is tried. For when he or she is tried. He shall receive the crown of life. He, uh, he shall receive the crown of life. And the woman, we all going to get our due. We're going to get the kingdom. Which the, Go ahead. Which the Lord have promised to them that love him. Which the Lord has promised to them that love him. Give me Exodus 34. Let me show you what it means when it says to them that love him. For God just so loved the world that he gave it. Mm -mm. We're going to find out what that means. Exodus chapter 20 and verse 5. Mm -hmm. Thou shalt not bow down thyself to them, nor serve them, for I, the Lord thy God, am a jealous God, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generation. So the Lord said he's going to bring, the, he's going to bring payback. He's going to bring the judgments of our sins upon us in the third and the fourth generation. I don't know if we've ever gone over this uh, particular uh, part of what I'm talking about when I said the third and the fourth generation. I'll just suffice it to say this here. We've been on this earth many times, okay? Uh, and that's what that's talking about. And that's the reason why when Moses was actually speaking to us, he was literally speaking to you and me. He was literally speaking to us, meaning your actual spirit as you sit in your chairs. He was speaking to you. When he said that if you did not keep these commandments, you, the Lord, will bring thee into Egypt again with ships. So that was being said. The, the ships didn't come to like the 1600s. Did those people that Moses was actually speaking to, did they go on the ships? No. So what was he doing? He was saying that in many generations down the line, you're going to be rounded up and put on those ships. So that's what it's talking about. So we had to come back over and over and over again. Okay. That's what this is talking about. We go deeper in it on another day, but you've been here many times before. The Bible uses the word regeneration so you can understand. Okay? In the book of Ecclesiastes, the first chapter talks about that. One generation passeth away and another generation cometh, but the earth abideth forever. And then it begins to talk about the cycles, different cycles. And then he includes spirit of man in that cycle because we come back. And that's the reason why he's using this kind of wording here. Read that again. Exodus chapter 20 and verse 5. Thou shalt not bow down thyself to them. This was, the, this was when we was coming out of Egypt, the most out of the, out of the ancient Egypt. He said, thou shalt not bow down and serve those Egyptian idols. Because that's what we just came from that foolishness. He said, thou shalt not serve and bow down and set, make up any graven images. Go ahead. Nor serve them. For I, the Lord, for I, the Lord, thy God, am a jealous God. For I, the Lord, thy God, am a jealous God. Okay. Visiting the iniquity of the fathers. Visiting, the word iniquity means sins. Visiting the sins of the fathers. Upon the children unto the third and fourth generation of them that hate me. Visiting the, the, visiting the sins of the fathers upon the children upon the third and the fourth generation. The reason why he said fathers is because that's where the line comes from. It's good for sisters to understand that. You don't bring back the nation, sister. Your black man does. You let, a, you let another nation lay down with you, you bringing back their seed. These black men got to give you the seed to bring the Israelites back. Period. That's how that goes. Read that again. Verse 5. Thou shalt not bow down themselves to them. Thou shalt not bow down to the idols and nor, serve them. Go ahead. Nor serve them. Read. For I, the Lord thy God, am a jealous God. Go ahead. Visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children. Unto the third and fourth generation of them that hate me. Of them that hate me. So a lot of our people hate God because it's telling you what hate is. It says, I will visit the sins, I will visit the punishments upon the children and the children's children unto the fourth generation, unto the third and the fourth generation of them that hate me. So we're going to find out what it means to hate God. Keep reading. 
And showing mercy unto thousands and of God will, on the other hand, he will show mercy unto thousands of them that love me and keep my commandments. So to love God means to keep God's commandments. So to hate God is to do what? To break God's commandments. So is it a mystery as to why do you got all of the nations and everybody trying to get you to break the commandments of God? It's not a mystery because they understand that as long as we are breaking God's commandments, we are showing that we hate God. And if, and if God perceives that we hate him, our enemies will continue to destroy us. That's what uh, Holophanes was talking about in the book of Judith. That's what that was talking about. If, they, if the Israelites keep the commandments of God, you better not touch them because the God that hates iniquity will fight for them. But if you can get them to sin, then we shall prevail against them and take them into captivity. That was said in the history. So they knew this. Okay. So my point was about loving the Most High. Let's go back to James. James 1 and 12. James chapter 1 and verse 12. So to love God means to keep God's commandments. Read. Blessed is the man that endureth temptation. Blessed is the man and the, and the woman that endureth the temptation to keep God's commandments. Go ahead. For when he is tried. For when you are tried to make you go against the commandments of God. He shall receive the crown of life. You shall receive the crown of life when you don't allow that trial to cause you to break the commandments. Go ahead. Which the Lord have promised to them that love him. Which the Lord have promised to the Israelites that love him. That's why we went to Exodus to show you what love is. It is to keep God's commandments. That's the point. Y'all all right? Read on. Let no man say when he is tempted, I am tempted of God. Let none of you say during your trial that you are tempted because of God. God put that woman in front of me. Somebody would say, God caused that to happen. No, God didn't cause that to happen. Read it again. Let no man say when he is tempted, I am tempted of God. Let none of you say that when he, let none of you say when we are tempted that I am tempted of God. Go ahead. For God cannot be tempted with evil. For God cannot be tempted with evil. Neither tempteth he any man. God does not tempt you. Listen. But every man is tempted when he is drawn away of his own lust. Low, low, low. Let's read that again. That's the words that I wanted right there. But this is the whole reason why I went to this chapter, for this line right here. Read that again. But every man is tempted. Every he, man is tempted. When he is drawn away of his own lust. Of his own lust. That's and, not the most high's lust. Your own lust. Where do these lusts come from? Television. Friends. Family members. Social media. All types of evil. These things kindle in your own spirit and makes you believe that that spirit is your spirit that cause you to become one with evil, that, that cause you to become in agreement with evil. Here's somebody trying to get you to join some LGBT stuff and going to cause you to think, no, I, I was really struggling inside and I just, no, 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 you've been tempted. That is not of you. God didn't make you that way. Read that again. But every man is tempted when he is drawn away of his own lust. I wanted to also focus on the word drawn away, drawn away. You're being drawn away from what? The laws, the commandments. Oftentimes we ride past that. It says every, it says what? Read it again. But every man is tempted. You are tempted because you're doing the tempting, not God. You're the one that's allowing for, the, for your own temptation. Go ahead. When he is drawn away of his own lust. So you are drawn away from righteousness into wickedness. You're drawn away. You're being pulled away from the righteousness. You're being pulled away from the seeds that Christ was trying to sow unto you. You've been pulled away from that. And that's when those difficulties come in. That's when those thorns come in. That's when those, uh, those uh, trials and the things that we was reading in Mark, the things that, that, that hinder you, that's when these things come into play. Because you entertained it. Read it again. But every man is tempted when he is drawn away of his own lust. It is your own lust, not God's lust. You, 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 you played with your own sin. You meddled with your own sin. Because your sin ain't like my sin. That's letting you know that it's yours. Everybody's battling with different things. Some people is cigarettes. Some, people, some, some other people is alcohol. Some other people is dope. 
Some other people is adultery. Some other people is uh, fornication, uh, homosexuality, lesbianism. These are different lusts that are particular to that particular person. That's the reason why God is calling it your own lust. You got to fight against that. When you come into this truth, endure the temptation to purge those thoughts from you. That's how that goes. Y'all all right? Read. And enticed. You are enticed, meaning you're fully locked down. The Bible uses another word it uses is entangled. He becomes entangled. He becomes entangled in it. He or she becomes entangled with it where you can't even reach them. You've seen mighty brothers and sisters that came through this truth. And when sin hit them, you see them on YouTube now talking complete craziness. And there's not a scripture that you can bring to bring them out of that. That's seriously entangled. That's an example. Entangled. What caused that? When you, when you allowed yourselves to be drawn away from the commandments following your own lust that you have not yet purged. That you have not yet kicked off because it's going to take time. This is the reason, again, why I say when brothers come in, don't look on the other side of the aisle because you got demons that you're trying to get rid of. Sisters, same thing. Don't be so quick to jump on the brother because he got demons. And you got demons. You got to have time to get yourselves built up in the scriptures before you talk about uh, proving and, and mating and all of that. You got to get yourselves right because those, those, those tentacles of demons are still trying to pull you back. And some brothers and sisters allow their own lusts to get them in trouble. And then they find themselves out, shipwrecked, skid row. Read. James chapter 1 and verse 15. Then when lust has conceived, it bringeth forth sin. And sin, when it is finished, bringeth forth death. Is that crystal clear? And that's exactly what happens. That's exactly what happens. You, you, the lust has in your mind, and it is conceived. And then it brings, so once the thought of sin is there, then the action of sin comes there, and the, and the wages of sin is death, and the most high brings death, okay? So this is what our fight is about. Give me Hebrews 2. Hebrews 2. 2 and 1. Hebrews chapter it, 2 and verse 1. So it, again, it is our objective for us to not be drawn away. Read. Therefore. We ought to give the more earnest heed to the things which we have heard, lest at any time we should let them slip. For if the word spoken by... Uh -huh. Read one again. I don't want to go past one. Just stay on one. Read it again. Therefore, we ought to give the more earnest heed. We to ought to give the more earnest heed. This ain't just Bible reading. Give the more earnest heed. Go ahead. To the things which we have heard. To the things which you're hearing in class, which you hear on the radio, meaning when, you, when I say on your radio, in your car radio, if you're driving, hopefully you got a class on. Can you dig it? Hoping that you got on your laptop or whatever, your phone, you, you're, playing, you're playing a class that can build you up. I was listening to the class coming in here when the deacons was going over King David. That was some heavy information. And he was talking about how sin got in him. He looked at Bathsheba, and he said, oh, hell, and knowing, knowing that she was married. And her husband was, David, was David's man in the military. He's going to war. So she's home, bathing. David sees her on the roof, and all kinds of thoughts, boom, hit him in the, hit him in the head. Now he makes a way to lay with the woman. Like the deacons was bringing out, she probably complaining. He's always at war. He ain't paying me no attention. All that madness. But the brothers hear that. Brother got, he got sin on his mind. That's exactly what he want to hear. This is the king of David. This is King David. Showing you how sin is. He get the finger like that. Then he lay with the woman. Now she's pregnant. How is he going to pass this thing off? This is, how, this, is how sin, this is how sin works. Now she's pregnant. Her husband has been to war for months. Damn sure ain't his. So what do he do? Try to say, come, come on, go lay with the woman. So hopefully we can do the Jedi mind trick and make this man believe that that's his baby. Negroes have done things like this here. Y'all know what I'm talking about. I hear about these things all the way up to now. People do this. But the Bible got to record it. 
So being that he said, no, I ain't doing that because I'm, I'm, I'm a devout man for the most high. And we have not won the battle yet. So I ain't going home to lay with my wife. So after a while, you, after a while, you ain't going to be able to pass this on. You say, hell, he ain't been with her in five, six months. And she's already three months pregnant. So I got to kill him. Put him in the hottest part of the battle. And everybody move back and let him die. That's how far sin can go. Think about that. Enticed. Read that again. Hebrews chapter 2 and verse 1. Therefore, we ought to give the more earnest heed to the things which we have heard. So we have to give the more earnest heed to the, to the gospel, to the commandments, to the teachings, which you have heard. You've heard it on your car. You heard it on your phone. You heard it in class. The most I got the classes out here. I was having a conversation with a brother about a month ago, and I was telling him about, I said, you know what? The way these classes are rolling now, there's no excuse for a brother or sister to not get these classes. There's no excuse. I really get pissed off when I hear people coming up and don't and act like they can't get to this truth. When I started out in this truth, man, let me tell you something. I, we used to have to deal with this thing with videotapes. That's how far back I go. I'm not saying that I'm uh, old Methuselah in the truth. I ain't saying that. But I'm saying that there was no internet. There was no YouTube when I started in this. 1991. There was no, uh, no YouTube, none of that. So what we had to do, we had to literally take videotapes, bring equipment. I lived in Harlem, New York. I had to bring my equipment to the school, One West, used to record the shows on a two-hour tape, then take them down to Manhattan uh, Neighborhood Network on 23rd Street and have to submit the tapes there for them to air. And if you didn't catch it on, if you did not catch it when it aired, that was it. You didn't get it. There was no, let me get your phone and all that. You, we had them big Nextel phones, remember them? They had no screens on them with, with, with video. You, there was none of that. So if you didn't get, if brothers didn't give you the tape and you didn't catch the public access channel, you wasn't getting it unless you caught them on the street, which is how I found out about it. I actually caught the brothers. I caught them on public access and then I caught them on the street. But anyway, my point was, that was it. That was, that was the extent, almost the extent of this truth being pushed out there. Now, there's no excuse at all. And once it played on the, on the air, you couldn't back it up. Once it played, it's just like watching a live program. Once it passed, once the time slot was done, then they put some other foolishness on there, and that was the end of it. You had to wait for it to come on again. Now you can take your phone, zip, zip, go all over the place and get any class you want. Minimum three times a day, seven days a week, you got the truth. There is no excuse for a brother or sister to talk about I didn't have access to this truth. None. It's really pathetic, but that's what the scriptures say. Uh, read it one more time. Hebrews chapter 2 and verse 1. Therefore... We ought to give the more earnest heed to the things which we have heard. So we ought to give the most earnest heed to the things that we have heard, lest that meaning any, this gospel, lest that any time, meaning that if you don't give the more earnest heed, we should let them slip. You will let this truth slip by you. And some of the people that came through and heard this gospel out there talking straight up crazy, and you would look at them and say, damn, were they even ever in the truth? They completely let it slip. Can you dig it? Completely let it slip. Now, give me the book of Corinthians, 1 Corinthians 15, 33. 1 Corinthians chapter 15 and verse 33. This is another way how we let things slip. Read. Be not deceived. The Lord said, don't be deceived. Go ahead. Evil communication. Evil communication, meaning the conversation that you have. Like I always talked about uh, in times past and even now. What you allow to entertain you will actually become you. The persons, the persons of, to whom you keep company with, you will eventually end up just like that person. Okay? There's a saying that they have out here. They say, watch your thoughts, for they will become words. Watch your words, for they will become action. Your actions will become habits. Your habits will turn into your character. And then your character will mark your destiny. But it all started with a thought. 
Because you didn't check your thought. Your thought led you to words. Now you got conversation. Conversation turns into action. You tell, these, you tell some of these women, brothers will be in the ear, like another one of the elders say, you give some of these slick dudes your ear, and the next thing you know, they got your underwear. That's, that's real talk. All you think, yeah, all they have to do, pss, pss, pss. here you go, huh? <laughs> I got her. <laughs> she done. You figure that? Because he knows that once I get that acknowledgement, that's me, I got my foot in the door. And all I have to do is keep wiggling in there till I got her on lock. Boom. But if you got your mind set up right, say, is this of the Lord or is it ain't of the Lord? And make your decision right there. This is not of the Lord. Boom. Go that way. Because all, every one of us have to be responsible for the information and conversation that we allow ourselves to be subjected to. Wherever you end up, it's because you allowed yourself there. You have to be intelligent to make the right choice to, to discern whether this is a wicked conversation or a righteous conversation. God gives us all that ability. The question is, do we allow enticing sin and temptation to draw us away from that knowledge? And whenever we do that, we end up on spiritual skid row and shipwreck. Y'all all right? Read that, Corinthians. 1 Corinthians chapter 15 and verse 33. Mm -hmm. Be not deceived. Evil communications corrupt good manners. That's what I was just talking about. If you allow evil communication to come into your space, it will eventually corrupt the ways. It will corrupt your good manners. Your good manners is the commandments. You get the wrong people to continue to keep talking to you after, after a while, you ain't, you ain't going to have to do the commandments anymore, you're going to say to yourself. You're going to begin to justify wickedness because you continually allow this wickedness to stand before you. And it will begin to erode your good, your good conscience. So you have to be firm and say no right off the bat. So keeping that in mind, now I'm getting ready to get into the subject. So I'll say to y'all, do not be deceived because we are in a time now where major deception is coming through. The Bible says that the dragon is angry and raw, wrath, mad, and he's sending floods of lies all over trying to subvert the awakened Israelites to put them back to sleep. That's the time period that we're in now. Y'all all right? Now, give me, I'm going to go to my video. I'm going to be ready to play a video. Don't, don't, don't show it yet. I'm getting ready to go into a video. This is this man. I forget his name, but his name will pop up. He goes into, this is an Edomite, so-called Jew. He speaks and he says that there are categories of cults, okay? Cult, C-U-L-T, okay? This is described by Esau. Esau, can you imagine that? I, I, found, I, I found out an oxymoron to even hear him talk about cults. But these people got the diabolical mind to actually do that. The categories of cults described by Esau. Wow. Hell, put it up there. How many of y'all are familiar with this? With this cat, this guy's face. I don't know who he is. But this is what it, this this is about Rick Allen Ross, the Cult Education uh, Institute. I guess this is some channel that they invited this Edomite to speak on. I think that's what it is, right? And he's going to give you the breakdown of cults. Hit it. For example, there, are, there, there is the white identity movement in which, uh, uh, w let me take that back. There is the white Christian identity movement, which is a movement of, within Christianity that claims that the white race are the chosen people of God. Pause and it, they are pause it, pause it. We're going to go back through that again. The three different groups, basically, because what he's describing now, he's moved to the last group. I just kind of skipped some of the stuff before it. But he goes through three different categories. One, one of the categories is called a political, what he would call a political cult. I find this, uh, I find this amazing, amazing that he's sitting up here as an authority talking about cults. This is really difficult for me. Okay, that's why I said the American system of hypocrisy. 
Here this man going to sit up here and talk about cults. And the first cult he spoke about was a political cult. Then he talks about a racist cult. Now he's now then he's going to talk about terrorist cults. And you got this man talking about it. Are y'all all right? Here comes some deception now. Hold on now. Play it again. Started from my time again. Seven seventeen. What was the time I gave y'all? Yeah. Start from there. Yeah. For example, there are there there is the white identity movement, in which uh, uh, let me take that back. There is the white Christian identity movement, which is a movement of within Christianity that claims that the white race are the chosen people of God and they are the new Israel. And there are perhaps 50,000 or more Christian identity church members in the United States who see themselves as God's elect and the rest of the world as evil, even satanic, and marked by God by, by, by not being white and being black, being Hispanic, being Asian, as being the other and being uh, less uh, in God's eyes. He's talking as if he's separate from the damn KKK. He's talking as if he's about, and there are other white groups that have a KKK mind that has a white uh, perception of God and, and everyone else is, is subjected to evil and this. He's talking as if he's on the outside of that. Y'all dig it? Like, you get what I'm saying? Like, he's unbiased. Unbelievable, these guys. Play on. <laughs> In God's eyes. And the flip side of that would be the black identity movement, which includes the, the black Israelites, the black Hebrews, uh, groups like the, the uh, Nuwabians that were led by Malachi York, and groups like Israel United in Christ, uh, currently led by Nathaniel Ray, or as he calls himself, Nathaniel Ben Israel. You're here to disrespect this, but, I, but, but don't forget about what I said earlier. He's trying to disassociate himself from the white identity groups. So he's saying, "Listen, I'm not a part of the. Uh, he's, I'm not a part of the white racist groups. So I could talk about them, and I could talk about the quote unquote black groups." Because I'm holy. Because I'm, I'm absolved of all of that. Diabolical. How in the world would he even be able to sit on this show with his shirt on and he's sitting on stolen property? This is what I'm talking about when I say people be, be deceived. They'll listen to something like this. They'll be knocked out, zapped by television and won't realize what the hell they're looking at. How in the world are you going to be on somebody else's land talking about cults? What cult did it take for you to murder the people? For you to get to be able to sit up there with your sweat on? It's just, I'm, I'm getting ahead of it. Let me lean back. Let me lean back. Let me, let me, let me slow it down again. Play on. <laughs> so he, he mentioned us, right? He threw us in there because objectively, you know his real issue has nothing to do with the KKK. His real issue has nothing to do with white extremism. Because white extremism and KKK and white Jesus is what got him up there. So his problem is not that. His problem is us. Because with what we're talking about is going to take away all of that. Can you dig it? That's what's happening. All right, let's play on. Ray, or as he calls himself, Nathaniel Ben Israel. So there, they believe, uh, conversely, that God is black and that Jesus was black. Listen to what this dude has said. He said that we believe. In other words, God is not black. In other words, Jesus is not black. That's what he's saying. He's saying we are crazy. We are a cult because we believe that God is black. Give me Daniel 7 and 9. Daniel <laughs> chapter 7 and verse 9. I beheld to the throne. Let everybody get it because there's new people in here. Let's see if we are in a cult. Daniel 
Daniel chapter 7 and verse 9. I beheld till the thrones were cast down. Daniel the prophet said, I beheld in the vision, because the Lord was showing them a vision of the kingdoms of this world being thrown, being destroyed. In other words, Daniel is seeing what this Edomite don't want to happen. That's what he said. This, the literal vision that, that Daniel is bringing out is the absolute uh, ant and, ant what's the, word? Uh, the antithesis of what uh, this Edomite want. He doesn't want this thing. This is a nightmare to him. Read it again. I beheld till the thrones were cast down. I beheld till the thrones, meaning all of the kingdoms of this world, was thrown down in Armageddon. That's what Daniel is talking about. Go ahead. And the ancient of days did sit. And the ancient of days. The ancient of days. Who's more ancient than days itself? God. God was here before days. So that's who that's talking about. And the ancient of days did do what? Did sit. He sat down. So if he sat down, that means he had a body. Huh? One no puff of smoke. Daniel is telling you that he saw him sit down. So that means he had to have legs. Right. He had to have a back and arms, a head, in order for you to sit. Go ahead. Whose garment was white. Whoa, as whoa. He had a garment on. Whose garment that was covering his body. His garment was what? White as snow. So he had on a white garment. Listen. And the hair of his head. Wait a minute. And the hair on this body. The hair on his head. So he had a head. If he had a head, he had a body. And the hair on the Ancient of Days head. Like the pure wool. Like the pure wool. So God is given the texture. The texture of the supreme being got woolly hair. Where are we reading? The Bible. So what in the world is wrong with these Negroes talking about the Bible is a white man's book? You stupid as hell. Your head is up in Babel's ass. Coming with that madness. Read that again. I beheld till the thrones were cast down, and the Ancient of Days did sit, whose garment was white as snow. Whose garment was white as snow? And the hair of his head like the pure wool. And the hair on God's head was like the pure wool. Now give me where Philip asked about it you know what I want he says show us the father because the Israelites the disciples it was, was like they was talking and they said listen show us the father they were talking to Christ Philip y'all alright watch this yes sir 14 8 John St. John chapter uh, 14 verse 8 that is 8 and 9 right Yes. John chapter 4. Everybody got it? John chapter 14 and verse 8. Philip saith unto, unto him, Lord, show us the Father. It, and it sh sufficeth us. And it we'll be satisfied. Us. He said, look, show us the Father. And it will, we'll be satisfied. Just show us the Father, Christ. Listen. Jesus saith unto him. Jesus saith unto him. Have I been so long time with you? Have I been so long time with you? And yet hast thou not known me, Philip? And you don't know me, Philip? He that have seen me. If you have seen me. Have seen the Father. You've seen the image of God. Oh, Revelation. I ain't done with you yet. Give me Revelation. This is an easy one, but I'm going to hit you in the head with some more. Uh, Revelation 1. We're just going to skip down. The first verse, verse 1, and jump to 14. Let's see, let's see what Christ said. Revelations chapter 1 and verse 1. The revelation of Then we're going back to that demon that said that madness. The revelation of Jesus Christ. The revelation, the revealing of Jesus Christ. Which God gave unto him to show unto his servants things which must shortly come to pass. Read. And he sent and signified it by his angel unto his servant John. Go ahead. Who bear record of the word of God. So the apostle John wrote down. That's what it means when it said he bear record of the word of God. John wrote it down. He wrote down the revelation of Jesus. Go ahead. And of the testimony of Jesus Christ. And he wrote down the testimony of Jesus Christ. Come on. And of all things that he saw. And John also wrote 
all things that he saw with his eyes. So that means he was awake. Now jump to verse 14. Verse 14. His head and his hairs were white like wool. His head and his hairs were white like wool. There's the woolly hair that we read in Daniel's because I look like my father. Go ahead. As white as snow. White as snow, that pure wool. Go ahead. And his eyes were as the flame of fire. The whites of Christ, Christ's eyes were red because he drank wine. When you read the scriptures, read. And his feet like unto fine brass. And his feet like unto fine brass. So John is given a full physical description of Christ with a long garment on. When you start with verse 13, it tells you that. Start with verse 13 real quick. Verse, Revelation chapter 1 and verse 13. And in the midst of the seven candlesticks. And in the middle of the seven candlesticks that's representing the seven churches that were scattered throughout Asia Minor, where the Israelites were scattered in. One like unto the Son of Man. One that looked like Jesus Christ. This is what John is saying. I see somebody that looked like the man I knew as Christ. Clothed with a garment down to the foot. That's the part that I needed. He, so he saw Christ with a garment down all the way to his feet. So he's given a full physical description. So he described the garment that Christ had on. Read. And girt about the paps with a golden girdle. And around his waist was a golden girdle. Go ahead. His head and his hairs were white like wool. So it's now he's giving you the head and the hairs on Christ's head. White and woolly. Go ahead. As white as snow. Go ahead. And his eyes were as a flame of fire. And his eyes were as a flame of fire. And his feet like unto fine brass. Why, is it, why did he jump to his feet? Because the rest of his body was covered with the garment. Y'all understand? When y'all read, I got a picture of what you're reading. That's the reason why he's jumped. He went, he said he scribed his head because his head is outside the garment. Then he described the garment and the girdle around his waist. So what else is left? The feet. So now he's going to tell you about his feet. And his what? And his feet like unto fine brass. And his feet was like brown. As, brown brass. Go ahead. As if they burned in a furnace. So Jesus Christ's feet look like brass burned in a furnace. That's a black man with woolly hair, crystal clear. Now, give me Hebrews. Give me Hebrews 1 and 1. Hebrews. I'm showing you these white people that are the doggone devils that the Bible speaks of. And I know they don't like that kind of verbiage. You're a hate group for telling the truth about them. Well, you've been found out that you're a liar. You said that we believe that God is black, that we believe that Jesus is black. And even that's a problem. Because if you really believe in something, you're going to act on it. They're trying to say it as if, as if you're going to create doubt. If you believe that somebody's coming to save you, your whole action is going to be different. They don't want us to even believe in it. That's the reason why they're saying that. Okay? Read. Hebrews chapter 1 and verse 1. Listen now. God. Who at sundry times? At sundry times, meaning at different at at, at 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 different times. Come on, sundry times and in divers manners and in different ways. Let's read that again so we can get that understanding of what the Bible is saying. Read it again. Hebrews chapter one and verse one. God who at sundry times. So this is talking about the supreme being, God who at many times and in divers manners and in different ways. Divers means different. And in different ways, what did he do? Spake in time past unto the fathers by the prophets. He spake to the Israelites through the prophets. That's what God did. God spoke to the Israelite people many, diff uh, many times and through different ways, through visions and things like that, to speak to the Israelite people. That's what he's saying here in Hebrews. Read it again. God, who at sundry's times. Who at sundry. Sundry's sundry. times. And in divers manners. And in many different ways. Divers mean ma many. Divers mean many. Many different ways. Go ahead. Spake in, in time past unto the fathers by the prophets. Go ahead. Have in these last days spoken unto us by his son. And these last days he has spoken to the Israelite people through his by his son. Go ahead. Whom he have appointed heir of all things. God appointed Christ heir over everything. So who are we talking about right now? Christ. Go ahead. By whom also he made the world. By whom Christ also made the worlds. Christ was in the beginning when the, everything was being made. Listen now. Go ahead. Who being the brightness of his glory. Who being the brightness of God's glory. Christ is the brightness of God's glory. Listen what else he is. In the express image of his person. And Christ is the express image of God. Did y'all hear that? 
So now let's go back to this deviant on video. Uh, the uh, Nuwabians that were led by Malachi York and groups like Israel United in Christ, uh, currently led by Nathaniel Ray, or as he calls himself, Nathaniel Ben Israel. They believe... And it's not that uh, con- Bishop calls himself that. That is his name. Go ahead. So they're, they believe, uh, conversely, that God is black. So th- in and other words, that- you knew, you're all crazy. You're ludicrous. You're in a hate group for believing that. They brainwashed you. Listen to the damn devil with his forked tongue to tell you that. We read it out of the Bible crystal clear, and the snake going to get up there and tell you who's standing on stone. He's biting the hell out of, na- biting the hell out of God and going to tell you what the Bible is talking about, the hypocrisy of this country. Read, play it again. And that being black is being godly, and that being white is being ungodly and not part of the chosen people of God. So they're saying that's what we're saying. Hold it now. They're saying that's what we're saying. Okay? The Bible says that. The Bible says that. Do I need to read that? Yeah, I got to give it to him. I got to give him one. Give him one. Give me, somebody give me one. Somebody kind of get a witness. Somebody give me one. Give, give me a good one. Egil, what you got? Give, give me one. Give, give me something. Give me something. Re- get, get this devil saying his statement again. I, ain't even, I haven't even dealt deep yet. That Jesus was black and that being black is being godly and that being white is being ungodly and not part of the chosen people of God. And in that sense, groups like the Nuwabians and the Black Israelites are the polar opposites of the Christian identity movement and the Ku Klux Klan and so forth that are associated with white supremacy and white identity. I can't take it no more. Give me Deuteronomy 7 and 6. Deuteronomy chapter 7 and verse 6. For thou art an holy people unto the Lord thy God. No, no, no. That's you reading that wrong, brother. The Bible says what? For thou, for art. thou, hold it, thou, and I'll, I want Amos after that. Yes, sir. I, I, I still, I want to stick the knife all the way in him. Get him. Read, read it again. No, nah, I, I, I want. Um, well, that might be good, but I want um, maybe just forget about it. Amos three. I want that one. But but read read. Um, well, you might give me the Joel too. What you got in Joel? Just hold on to that. All right. Where we at? Deuteronomy 7 and 6. I got to do these things. Deuteronomy chapter 7 and verse 6. Because he said that, that, that we are subscribing to a cultish. And he put the negative connotation on cult, by the way. Cult means culture. That's what it really means. It means it's, it's, it's a group of people that have similar beliefs and all that kind of, and all those things. We're going to read the definition after this. Uh, read. Deuteronomy chapter 7 and verse 6. For thou art an holy people unto the Lord thy God. The Lord thy God have chosen thee to be a special people unto himself. Unto himself means only. That's what that means. He said, for thou, for thou meaning you. He's talking to the Israelites only. He said, for thou art a holy people unto himself. So that means everybody else is not included in that. If he says, for thou, thou means you. There's everybody else on the planet Earth. But he says, I'm not talking about everybody else. I'm only talking about you. This guy's a so-called Jew, by the way. He practiced that, but this, the book don't even belong to him. And he got the nerve to call the real inhabitants of the book false. He go pay for that, by the way. Read. Above all people. God says that thou art a holy people unto himself above all people that are upon the face of the earth. Go ahead. That are upon the face of the earth. That's crystal clear. That's the Israelites. So he's just rambling. His, 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 let me tell you what's wrong with Esau. Esau thinks that he can just pop his red face up there and say that I'll speak for the Bible and you will never go read it. He's that confident. He's that confident. All he has to do is just get up there and say, he said, just let me talk to him. I've seen this happen before. Black people be in a scuffle or something. And nobody could break it up. White man would come along and say, oh, move, 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 move. Let me deal with it. Look. And all of a sudden, peace just comes to the earth. That's how these people think. Read. <laughs> you want that one in Amos? Yeah. 
Hey, no, give me, give me uh, he yells. Come on. Joel? Yeah. Joel, chapter 2 and verse 27. And ye shall know that I am in the midst of Israel, and that I am the Lord your God, and none else, mm. and my people shall never be ashamed. Do you hear that? The Most High is talking about the 12 tribes of Israel. Now we get ready to just bring it all the way home. Give me Amos. Amos chapter 3. Amos chapter 3 and verse 1. Hear this word that the Lord has spoken against you, O children of Israel. Hear this word that the Lord has spoken against us, because the Most High was mad at us at this point. But he's going to identify who he's talking about. He says, hear this word that I have spoken against you, O children of Israel. Read. Against the whole family. Against the whole family. Which I brought up. Family. Was, against the whole family. Is there an S on that word? No. Against the whole family singular, meaning the 12 tribes of Israel. Go ahead. Against the whole family, which I brought up from the land of Egypt. God didn't bring everybody out of Egypt. He brought the Israelites out of Egypt. Listen to what he's going to say. Saying, you only. Hold it. You what? You only have I known of all the families of the earth. So God don't know the other nations. That's what the scriptures say. That part so, right there, Bishop, yeah. had an S on it. Yeah. <laughs> you only. Uh, right. Now he put families in there. <laughs> Read it again. Exactly. You, you only. Have you I, singular. Have I known of all the families. Out of all of the other families on the planet Earth, I only know you. You only have I known of all the families of the earth. That's crystal clear. That's crystal clear. Therefore, the most I say he will punish us for our sins. And that's the reason why we went on slave ships. So they're trying to get rid of that information. They don't even want us. They're trying to remove the slave ships out the Bible. That's the reason why they were giving that sister so much hell with that 1619 uh, pro project. Because they said that is the connecting tie that will tie people to the scriptures. That we have to get rid of that. This devil is cunning. He thinks years, years on down the road. That's, that's the whole controversy of that. They don't want us to wake up. So that's why you get this flood of, of attacks now. Because they see, they say, you know what? We've underestimated the Israelites. Now this truth has gone all over the place and we get ready to catch hell if we don't stop this. Uh, so that was it, right? All right. Now, let's get back to where I was at. Let's go back to the devil. I had a time frame on there, right? Where I said stop at? Okay. Play it, play, play it again where we was at that Jesus was black and that being black is being godly and that being white is being ungodly and not part of the chosen people of God. And in that sense, groups like the Nuwabians and the black Israelites are the polar opposites of the Christian identity movement and the Ku Klux Klan and so forth that are associated with white supremacy and white identity. You hear that? These people are something else. Are something else. So he's basically trying to denigrate what we're doing. Trying to denigrate everything and trying to make himself look like he's some kind of authority. And that's the question. That's the question. Let's look up the word cult. Because America is all three of those categories. Let's, let's, let's be real about it. They're, 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 in a, they're in a political cult. Their politics, they, they, they got, so in other words, they have a culture of, of engineering politics and policies to destroy Israel. That's them on a political level. They also have a, a, a cult of racism that literally flat out uh, denies us of any kind of opportunity for us to even do something for ourselves. That's racism. That's, they did that. They also have a cult of terrorism where they murder our people in the streets. That's them. We're not doing any of that. But because we're trying to warn our people to stay away from these vipers, they say you're a hate group because you're, telling your, you're teaching your sheep to stay away from our wolves. You got it? Let's get all that. Let's can we get it went right. Okay. Uh, who, who gonna, let me read it. If anybody going to read it or I'll you, read it? I got you. It. Okay, come on with it. In, in modern English, a cult is a social group that in, is... The, so today is known as a social group. Go ahead. That is defined by its unusual religious, spiritual, or f f f f philosophical, philosophical belief. belief 
or by its common interest. So let's let me back it up again. I want everybody to pay attention to what we're reading. We're reading the definition of cult, what the people call cult, because some people you the reason the, this Edomite was going through, and then he said there's different kinds of cults. He's saying that one kind of cult is political, another kind is racist, and another kind is terrorism. So you hear people talking about, and then they use the word destructive cult. You hear some of the uh, turncoats that left, they try to say that, uh, that being in this truth is a destructive cult and stuff like that. We're going we're gonna to find out about destruction in a little while. Um, so let me, I'm, since it's in front of me, I'm a, can you see it? Yeah, I, All right, come on, bring it is up. a social group that is defined by... It a, says in modern, in, in modern English, in modern times, go ahead, a cult is a what? A social group. That is defined by its unusual religious, spiritual, or philosophical philosophical, philosophical beliefs. So they want you. To, so your your understanding upon reading this will be like, okay, th then cults can exist in a lot of different areas. Because what it's saying is that it's basically a so a social group that is defined by unusual religious unusual. Who determines what's unusual? Where's the standard for you to say? that that group is unusual was it usual for you to come over here and murder 77 million north american indians who determined that y'all get what i'm saying right who gives them the righteous pit pulpit to stand on to point their filthy fingers i'm about to go somewhere else with that to point their filthy fingers and call somebody a cult in a negative sense it says, go ahead. Or by its common interest. In or, or, or they also want to say that, that this cult can be also known for, for a group that have common interests. In a particular personality. Okay, so if we're the Israelites, they're saying that we fit this. Because groups can be made anywhere. You got unions that are groups. You got different uh, 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 groups that's out here. Any, uh, various Level of groups. You got police groups. You got union groups. You got all kinds of groups that could, they can just have common interests among themselves. That could be called a cult. Understand what I'm bringing. Go ahead. Or by its common interest in a particular personality, object, or goal. Or goal, whatever their goals are. Our goal is to get the kingdom. Go ahead. This sense of the term is controversial. This sense of the, un of the misunderstanding of the word cult is controversial. In other words, people hear the word cult and they think of it in an evil way. Mm -hmm. Cult simply means a social group. That's where the word culture comes from. A nation could be seen as a cult. Having divergent definitions, both in popular culture and academia, and, Go ahead. and has also been an ongoing source of con Tension mm -hmm. among scholars. So scholars have been debating on which way they should use this term cult. Listen now. Go ahead. Across several fields of study, Go ahead. the word cult is usually considered pro pejorative, pejorative, which means in a negative sense, a, a bad connotation. So in other words, when people use the word cult, they say that the when people hear the word cult, they automatically just shun away from it. That's what they mean by uh, pejorative. Okay? Like it's something bad. Understand this, Ed. So, like I said, there are cults that, like, uh, that are, or groups, or, or groups that are terrorists. Like I said, these people represent all three. What terrorism are we doing? What ter what, 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 what evils are we doing? We're reading the Bible and trying to, re trying to bring our people away from dope. Bring our people away from murder. Bring our people away from, from rape. But they need for our people to stay in dope, stay in rape, stay in murder, so that they can continue to rule over everybody. But if we're coming up trying to get our people out of that, they say, you're a hate group because you're stopping me from killing you. You're stopping me from raping you. You're stopping me from murdering you. So we're going to throw the word cult out there, and we're going to put that on you. But meanwhile, you've decimated nations. And you got the nerve to set up a church on blood and bones and tell the people to come learn about Jesus. But we're not supposed to look at you like the Satan that you are. Y'all all right? Now, uh, 
jump. The, let me see. What's my next video? Is it the same video? Did I ask for some more of that? Okay. What's the next video that I got? No, nope, there was more. There's, no, 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 no. The top was, was you stopped at 812? We, we did that already? Okay. All right. So now we're moving on. Uh, like the point that I'm making, I said this supreme hypocrisy, this is supreme hypocrisy of these people trying to point their fingers at somebody else. And, and their objective is to, is to mold the soft minds of our people. When I say soft minds, those that are on the fence, those that are really don't know the Bible, to mold people into their camp to be against their own salvation, okay? This man is no different from the KKK. I kid you not. So, the immediate question is, who gave them the authority to demonize anyone as a destructive cult? When it took destructive cultism on their part to even become such an authority. They had to murder people to even be able to sit up there and point their fingers. But because we are against you killing us, we're a cult. So now you understand what the Battle of Armageddon is all about? You understand why the Bible says that Christ has to come and destroy this man? Because they don't want this to be destroyed. They want to keep this going on. Give me the Lord's Prayer to show you how, how crystal clear this is real quick. Just give me the Lord's Prayer real quick to show you the diabolicalness of these people. The Lord's Prayer. Yes, sir. Matthew chapter 6 and verse 9. Listen. After this manner, therefore pray ye, our Father, which art in heaven. Everybody knows this, this scripture here. Our Father, which art in heaven. Listen now. Hallowed be thy name. I'm going to show you how our people are asleep in Christianity. Our people are asleep. Terribly sleep, like they brain a stone, like they can't pick up nothing. All them years of church and they ain't figured out nothing yet. Just the Lord's prayer, they need to understand this here. Listen. Thy kingdom come. The kingdom of God is coming. Thy will be done. The will of God is coming. Where? In earth. If the will of God and the kingdom of God is going to be done on this earth, what has to happen? This kingdom got to be destroyed. So what in the world they mean by Christians? These people are bugged out stupid. In order for the kingdom of God to come and be in earth as it is in heaven, this kingdom has to be destroyed. So it's not a, it's not a mystery as to why you hate any tenets of righteousness. It's not a mystery as to why they hate any righteousness coming from any of you. It's not a mystery as to why when you endure past the tricks and the wiles of Satan, why they hate that. It's not a mystery to me. It's not a mystery. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. So that means the kingdom of Satan got to be destroyed. That's what it's talking about. Give me Revelation 12, 9 and 10. Then we're going to get more into my scriptures. Y'all all right? Revelations chapter 12 and verse 9. Listen. And the great dragon was cast out. The great dragon is the great red dragon. This is talking about Esau. He's red. That's him. This is who it's talking about. With the seven heads, the seven main governments of all the so-called Europeans. The Greeks, the Romans, the Spanish, French, Germans, Russians, and the British. And out of Britain came America, which is the eighth head that shall go into destruction. That's what perdition means. That's where we're at right now. Read. That old serpent called the devil. That old serpent called Satan, the devil. Go ahead. And Satan. Go ahead. Listen which, now. Which deceiveth the whole world. Who deceived the whole planet Earth? This man. We just read out of the Bible. Let me, let me show you that it ain't talking about nobody but him. We just read out of the Bible that God is a black man. Did we not? When I said a black man, I'm talking about the woolly hair and the feet, the skin was like brass burned in a furnace. What did they give you? Charles Manson mm. as Jesus. Give, where that picture at? Give me that thing. 
Give me that thing y'all showed last night. He had the original Caesar Bozier. The original Satan. Huh? The one that y'all had on the group last night. Yeah. Let me show, show that real quick. Now, I hope I, I hope, hold it now. Do I need to, hey, do we need to pour water on somebody? Because they might be like, oh, start falling asleep. Had to flash it up there, take it back off. Put it back up there again. <laughs> this is dead something. Look at this thing here. Read that thing in the Bible again. And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil, and Satan, which deceiveth the whole world. Little babies, hopefully they ain't in here, will point to this, not these children, but if you carry this outside and show it, that's Jesus. Little babies. Y'all know what I'm talking about because you did it. Can I get a witness? They would all say this is Jesus. That's a major deception because this is not in the Bible, period. Right. As Jesus or God. So how is it that our people have been made to say that this is Jesus? That took cult. Cult is people that can't think. That's what it's talking about. That's when, when you get into the quote-unquote negative attributes of an of an of being in an occult or an occult they say people that 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 don't think for themselves this is the kind of stuff they say and they're saying this this edomite says this i don't know if we got to that part we probably missed it or whatever but he says that that being in an occult people don't allow the people to think for themselves and i'm like wait a minute but we just read out of the bible no you didn't see that that's what they tell you and they tell you that what we just saw up on the screen that's the real Jesus. What did he say about us? He said, he mentioned our name. He mentioned Israel, United Christ. He mentioned the bishop. And then he said that we believe that Jesus is black. We read it out the Bible. He said that God, we said that God is black with the woolly hair and all of that. We read it out the Bible. But they said, no, you just believe that. But how come this vicious vermin didn't say nothing about that picture that we just popped up there again? Put it up there again. How come his, his virulent beast didn't say nothing about this. His beast children. How come they didn't say nothing about this? This ain't in no Bible. Diabolical beast. Diabolical. <laughs> Read. He was cast out into the earth. He, meaning Esau, going to be cat, kicked out. I'm, I'm reading this because I'm coming off of what we read in the Lord's Prayer. The kingdom of God, it says, Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. So in order for God's kingdom to be done here, Esau's kingdom got to go. This red man's kingdom got to be destroyed. That's what we read in the, we, you, you saw the language in the Lord's Prayer. But here is actually going to explain literally what I just said. That's going to go perfectly with what we just read out of the Lord's Prayer. Read 9 and 10 again. Revelations chapter 12 and verse 9. And the great dragon was cast out. The great dragon, the great red dragon having seven heads and ten horns. That's what it's talking about when you read the third verse of that same chapter. It talks about him. This chapter proves that the white man's the devil clearly. 100%. Read. That old serpent called the devil. And he's not white either. I have a hard time using that term white because it's not white. There ain't nothing white on him at all. And you're not black, you're brown. These people are red, just like the Bible says they are. Read. That old serpent called the devil. That old serpent called the devil. When do you see a red spirit? The, when it, the Bible says that the devil is red, it ain't talking about no spirit. It's talking about this man. He's, he's the children of Satan. They mad that we say that. They say, they literally believe that we're the devils. you damn right, because the Bible says that. That big whale on SPLC, that woman, talking that madness. Boy, she's ugly as hell, too. Damn. <laughs> Read. And Satan. Ain't with nothing wrong with that. <laughs> it is what it is. They call us ugly. They call us beasts. They call us bears and monkeys and gorillas. Right. What the hell am I going to look at a walrus and going to talk about that's a beauty? No, she ugly as hell. <laughs> Read. Which deceive, deceiveth the whole world. What did this devil do? He deceived the whole planet. And making everybody believe, regardless, and there's not one Bible. Understand what I'm saying? Out of all of the translations, none of the Bibles describe Christ as white. None of them. 
We just read out of this one here. It says, woolly hair and skin like brass burned in the furnace. Did we not read that? Yes, sir. Sisters, did we not read that? I can't hear you. Say it like you're in church. <laughs> All right. That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> read that thing again. <laughs> Revelations chapter 12 and verse 9. Have, I shouldn't have did that. <laughs> Lord, put that picture up there too? Damn. Y'all got an escape tunnel for me, man, to get out of here when the class is over? Read. <laughs> Revelations chapter 12 and verse 9. And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil and Satan. That old serpent called the devil and Satan. What did he do? Which deceiveth the whole world. He deceived the whole world in making the whole world believe that he was God. Made the whole world to believe that he was Jesus. Made the whole world believe that they can't get salvation unless they come and sit in the back of his church, basically. And beg for forgiveness. That's a hell of a drug, man. That's some real crack. They don't even make a, there's no crack factory that can make crack that potent. People can get off crack, but it's hard to get off that thing there, man. Mm. I've seen people that you showed them the whole Bible and they'd be like, I don't know. What. That crack got them. Read. He was cast out into the earth. The Bible says that when the Christ, when the kingdom of God comes on this earth, this man is going to be cast out. Of his rulership. Go ahead. And his angels were cast out with him. And his angels, all of his media, his false media, all of his Christianity, Baptist, all, everything that's in line with him is going into destruction. That's what that's talking about. Read 9 again. Verse 9. I already broke it down. Let's just read it so in you can see what I'm saying. Revelations chapter 12 and verse 9. Read. And the great dragon was cast out. That old serpent called the devil and Satan. Go ahead. Which deceiveth the whole world. He deceived the whole world. Go ahead. He was cast out into the earth. This same devil was cast out into the whole earth. I'm talking about the people of Satan now. Go ahead. And his angels were cast out with him. And all his constituents, all his people that's with him is going to go down with him. Read. And I heard a loud voice saying so in heaven. So when he goes down, this, this is what's going to happen. And what? And I heard a loud voice saying in heaven. And I heard a loud voice in heaven saying, this is after this man is destroyed. Listen. Now is come salvation and strength and the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ. So what's holding up our salvation, brothers? This man got to go. That's what it's telling you. As long as he's in power, we can't get our salvation. The Most High has to destroy him. Not us. It ain't us that's going to do it. It's God going to do it. That's why we're reading it. The Most High is saying that God has to come and destroy this man. And then when that happened, the angels and everybody are going to be like, now has come salvation and strength to our God. That's what that's telling you. It's going to prove that it's talking about us. Read it again. Read 10 again. Verse 10. And I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, now has come salvation. Now is come salvation. And strength and the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ. For the accuser of our brethren is cast down. For the one that called us nigger, for the one that called us wetback, for the one that called us spick, for the one that called us monkey, those are our accusers. For the accusers have been cast down. The accuser of our brother is destroyed. That's when we're going to jump for joy. That's crystal clear. What in the world is wrong with these preachers with their blind selves? They can't read this? Give me Isaiah 42. And 13, for the accuser of our brethren is cast down. That's the reason why it says the same thing in Luke. The book of Luke, he said, and the Lord shall redeem us from the hand of our enemies and all that hate us. Isaiah chapter 42 and verse 13. Come on. The Lord shall go forth as a mighty man. The Lord shall go forth. What's the verse before that? Verse 12. Let them give glory unto the Lord. Okay, it's verse 13. Verse 13, the Lord shall go forth as a mighty man. So the Lord shall go forth as a mighty man. Why is the Lord saying this? Because at this time, he's going to be free from his prophecy. The only reason why this man is still ruling is because God had to give him his time to finish. For the Israelites to wake up so you can understand clearly about what I'm saying. The reason why we're still here is because the 144,000 have not fully awakened. How are they going to get woke? By us teaching. So it's obvious that they have to stop this. Because the more of us speak, the more of our people wake up. Right. And, the, and the sand in the hourglass is running out. 
So they have to stop it. That's what's happening. So when that time run out, the Lord said, okay, now it's over with. Now I can let, let, now I can let loose and tear up and smash. That's what we're about to read. Listen, read it. Verse 13, the Lord shall go forth as a mighty man. He shall stir up jealousy like a man of war. The Lord said he shall stir up jealousy like a man of war. Why? Because the Lord is jealous for his people. That's what it's talking about. The Lord is jealous when he sees these rats running around calling themselves Jews. Mm. And we're his people. Can you imagine how the father feels? He's mad as hell. We're his heritage and he sees us down here acting like a bunch of wild jackasses. He's mad as hell. Read. He shall cry. Yay. Raw. He shall prevail against his enemies. All nations is God's enemies. That's what he's talking about. All nations are God's enemies. Listen now. I have long time holding my peace. I have long time holding my peace. Why is it that the Lord had to hold his peace? Because the Israelites hasn't fully awakened yet. That's in Revelation, the seventh chapter, so you can understand where I'm coming from. He said, don't bring the destruction yet until we have sealed the servants of our power in their foreheads. Then for them to know that they're the Israelites and seal up. 12 tribes, 12,000 out of every tribe. He said, don't do it yet until that number has been sealed up. And until the one third has been sealed up when you read the ninth verse, when you read seven and nine, when it says Israel coming out of all nations and all tongues because Israel was scattered in all those areas. He said, when that, when that number wakes up, now you can bring the destruction. That's what he says in the seventh chapter. Now you can bring the destruction. Now you can burn up the trees. Now you can destroy the mountains. That's what he told the four angels to whom it was given to hurt the earth. He said, but don't do it yet because the Israelites are not fully awakened yet. That's what we're reading here. Read it again. I have long time holding my peace. I have been still. God said, I have been still. Why? Because I'm waiting for my Israelites to wake up. That's the only thing that's holding them back. Go ahead. And refrain myself. I refrain myself because I wanted to step in and kick your ass. That's what the Lord is saying. I wanted to step in and kill you, but I can't do it because my Israelites ain't fully awakened yet. Don't be afraid of the verbiage. Ass is in the Bible. Right. Can y'all dig it? All right. Go ahead. Now will I cry like a travailing woman. Why is he saying now will I cry like a travailing woman? Because at that now point, that's when he's going to be free to kick ass. That's what it means. He's going to be free from his prophecy. He don't have to hold back himself. He doesn't have to refrain himself. And hold himself back. That's what he's saying. When you read Isaiah, the 63rd chapter, he says that he's going to bring complete destruction. He said his garments and everything will be red up with Edom's blood. Who is this that cometh from Edom with his garments dyed in Bozrah? That's what he's talking about. He's talking about he, he, said, he said that he's going to smash them with his big black feet. And the blood, and the blood is going to sprinkle upon my garments. That's the day we're waiting for. Now, so like I said, who is this little roach Edomite that's up there talking this madness, trying to give you some information about cults, so to speak? We're going to talk a little bit about him. Give me Job 9.24. The question is, who gave him the authority? The Most High did. Because the Most High is raising him up, he's raising him up like he did King Pharaoh. The way he did King Pharaoh, he gave King Pharaoh all of his power Built him up to make him think that he was a God beside the Most High. So when I destroy you, everybody will know that I am God and besides me there is no other God. That's what he's doing to this man here. Read that, Job 9, 24. Job chapter 9 and verse 24. The earth is given into the hand of the wicked. The Most High gave the earth to him. He covers Hold the... It. The Most High, that's the reason why I'm reading it that way. The earth is given into the hand of the wicked. The wicked. That's why it says it in Malachi. Give me that in Malachi. Malachi uh, 1 and 4. The wicked. Are y'all all right? I, know, I hope there ain't no women having no dreams of being with Esau later. And they're, and they're getting all messed up. I ain't never coming to this store going to school again. He talking like that. Y'all ain't talking like that, right? <laughs> Bring it out. <laughs> Malachi Read. chapter 1 and verse 4. Whereas Edom saith. Whereas Edom Edom means red. That's the reason why the Bible uses that term, that color for Esau, for the devil. Whereas Edom saith, go we, ahead. We are impoverished. Go ahead. 
But we will return and build the desolate places. But we will return and build the desolate places. Go ahead. Thus, this is talking about them coming out of the caves. That's what it's talking about. This is going into the history about them coming out of the caves and they set up America. They set up, they set up Rome. Then they went down in Rome during the Renaissance, during the Dark Ages. They came back in the Renaissance and set up America. That's what they're talking about, rebuilding this. This is what they did. Listen. Thus saith the Lord of hosts. Thus saith the Lord of hosts. Go ahead. They shall build. You shall build up this hypocritical place that you're talking about, justice and law abiding. But I will throw down. And I will throw down, God said. Go ahead. And they shall call them. And the all of the people shall what? Call them the border of wickedness. And that's literally going to happen. All of the people on this earth is going to point to him and say he's the devil. They're all going to recognize. The Arabs are already doing it. They say he's the great Satan. Ahmadinejad, what Bishop called, I don't give a damn. That dude. Huh? Brought a tent to the UN and cursed Esau out. Tell him I smell sofa. <laughs> huh? Can you dig it? But everybody's going to know he's the devil. The Bible says that the, that the devil has to be revealed. That's what it says. Come on. And the people against whom the Lord have indignation forever. Wait a minute. Wait, 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 wait. Did we read that out the Bible or did I use a black highlighter like the Christians do? Bible. They use a black highlighter. Can you dig it? Can you highlight scriptures in black highlight? Because it's, it's like they don't even read it. They just mark it out completely. They don't even read it. So did we mark out that? No. It says what it says. Read it again. The people against whom the Lord have indignation forever. For how long? Forever. God hates these people forever. Who are they? He said, and the people against whom the Lord God has hatred. In other words, righteous anger against forever. That's the reason why he says that in Romans 9.13. Well, that white boy confirmed it on the show. That white boy said, what do you do with Romans 9.13? His simple but. He didn't even realize he was talking about himself. He said, what do you do in Romans 9, 13, where it says, Jacob have I loved, but Esau have I not disliked, not got mad at, but he hated Esau. The white man said that. Can we show that clip? <laughs> Can we get it? Dang, I should have queued it up. Oh, man, I, I, I showed in post-production. I don't have it. The brothers ain't got it ready. But it's a, it's a, it's a clip where it was on um, Ricky Lake and a white boy. They had, they had this Reverend Phelps, this white man that was up there with his red, white, and blue sweatbands. He was talking about Christianity. And the people was attacking him because they were saying that homos are going to burn up, which he was right. And they didn't like that. So they was trying to condemn them, thinking that they were condemning the Bible. So the white boy said, I'm tired of y'all speaking against my mentor, speaking against my pastor. And he said, what do you do with Romans 9, 13? And he read it. And he said it clearly. And it was loud. And, and they sat. I, I thought they were going to get rid of the video. I'm surprised they had it up there. Because they said, if this, this thing get out, it's all over. But yeah, it was up there. It took me years to find it, though. Brother got it for me. Hey, Shalom, how are you? Oh, sorry, Christ bless you. Good to see you. It took years to find it, but we actually got it. Y'all all right? Where we at? If I get carried away. What you got? You want to go back to Job? Yeah. So the Bible says that the most high have indignation forever against these people. This ain't hate, this ain't hate speech. This is, this is facts. Read. Job chapter 9 and verse 24. The earth is given into the hand of the wicked. The Bible says that the earth is given into these people's hands. And who are they? The wicked. The wicked. A lot of our people act wicked. Understand my point. We act wicked, but we are not the wicked. No matter how much a dog tries to be a cat, it's still a dog. No matter how, no matter how much a man tries to be a woman, he's still a man. No matter how much the wicked tried to be a saint, he's still the devil that that Bible speaks of. Can you dig it? That's hate talk up there. Read. He covereth the faces of the judges thereof. Did he not cover the faces of the rulers? Yes. When he came over here, he covered up the face of Gad and Reuben. Covered them up. Took them off their land. When he went to Puerto Rico, 
he took the he took over the kings over there. He when he went to Santo Domingo, he took over the kings over there. Went to Haiti everywhere he went. He took the rulers down and set up himself as the rulers. How did he get into Europe? Europe don't belong to him. How did he get into Australia and these different areas? He went in there and he took the land from them. Then set up Christianity. And if you call yourself getting your things back, he said, you're in a hate group. <laughs> you're in a cult. And we, some of us fall for that. Read. If not, where and who is he? If he is not the wicked, where and who is the wicked? Ain't the Lord beautiful? But that ain't enough. Give me Proverbs 29, too. I know, I know the Christian demons are still fighting in people's minds. They just don't want to accept that thing. They say, he's sitting up there saying these things against my Jesus. Lord, the Lord strike him down. What you got? You found it? Oh, Lord have mercy. Here we go. Damn, them brothers on point. I wanted to say is that I noticed you took a lot of time and selectively red, white, and blue. Um, what I... Um, what I also noticed is I'm that although, the the world, although you've taken a lot of time with like your that. wardrobe, um, it does not, your Can views you do not reflect, a little bit? your views do not reflect trivial, the American public. And Can you a, please, we're giving you a chance to talk, please let our, let our, pan, our people in the audience speak as well. To talk about what I'm wearing in sweatbands. She's getting to her point, I mean, if you would just listen. The level of the absurd, You're not listening, Reverend, way. we're listening, Reverend, excuse me. Reverend, we are trying. We are listening to you. We are trying to learn from you. We want to learn what you believe. When you're losing the argument on the merits, then you resort to silliness, like talking about the color of sweatbands. She's getting to her point. If you would just listen. Yes, Reverend. The point is that you are advocating hate, and God does not advocate hate. And how many times? John three sixteen says, "So God so loved point. the world that He gave His only begotten Son, more times that you whosoever make that ever point. believes." Hey, pause it, pause it. Let me show you what's happening in the audience. Yeah, you hear the demons, you hear all the clapping going on. That's all support. The signs of uh, applause, signs of flashing in the on All that's going on in there. The music, the organs, all that stuff going on to drown out any opposition. That's what's going on. Go ahead. Him right now, how here. many more you times do you want to oh, make that silly really point? This is an example. Right hold up. This is an example of mob rule. This is an example of mob rule. You don't have to be right. Just as long as you can poison enough minds, you can overtake righteousness. That's the that's the mentality of this country. I'm gonna talk about that on the next episode of the Bible, the Book of Our Fathers. I'm gonna go deep into that thing. Y'all all right? Play on. No. Now, hold, hold, stop, stop, stop. Could you imagine her husband? This is what I'm talking about. She would get up there and say that, and nobody would think that this woman is supposed to have a husband. Could you, what kind of man would be married to this? Here? Shut up, I'm talking now. The hell? I don't know, man. Some of y'all might have wives like this. <laughs> y'all all right? <laughs> Go ahead. Play on. <laughs> under the other, let so some loud mouth threaten people. You need people. to get a life. You got right? from one you to the other. You need to get a life on your own. Stop like worrying about gay people. How old you? Just don't matter. Listen. 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 How old you? Just he had enough. He said, y'all done disrespected my elder. Y'all are way out of line. I'm going to let you have it now. Go ahead. We elevate this dialogue a little bit. Excuse me, Charles. First please, all, audience, let's just try to give him. Charles wants to respond. To the young lady over here. What do you do with Romans 9.13 that says, as it is written, Jacob have I loved, but Esau have I not disliked. Not his sins disliked, but hated. He hated Esau. God hates. And to you, you have no room to talk about respect. Talking to a 63-year-old man like a pastor. <laughs> okay. 
I think y'all got the picture, right? Now, I don't know where that white boy is right now. I don't think there's enough liquor <laughs> or dope. <laughs> but that's all right. <laughs> Let's get back to the scriptures, man. Y'all all right? Where was I at? Proverbs 29. Proverbs 20. We read Job 9, 24. The Bible says that the earth is given into the hand of the wicked. And he said he covered the faces of the judges thereof. If not, where and who is he? Meaning who and where is the wicked? Now we're reading Proverbs 29 and 2. Come on. Proverbs chapter 29 verse 2. When the righteous are in authority, the people rejoice. Listen to that now. Hold it. The Bible says this, this is another indication of who's ruling the earth. The Bible says what? When the righteous are in authority. Let's pause it for a minute. When the righteous people are in rulership, listen. The people rejoice. The people of the earth rejoice. The animals rejoice. The birds rejoice. The bird flying around in pollution. Here these nuts put a bird in a cage talking about making it a pet. And the bird got wings to fly. That bird is mad as hell. There need to be another real, real movie called Birds. The Birds. Alfred Hitchcock. For you ones that ain't too young. Y'all understand what I'm talking about. Mm. But these birds are mad. All right? But what? But you, got the, got, you got the birds locked up in a cage. All he could do is jump from one perch to the next. He got wings. They got the elephant. The big elephant from the African continent. You bring him all the way over here and put him on a stool. Get up. The elephant up there. Putting a, putting a colored ball, the big balloon ball on his nose, on his trunk. Oh, daddy, look, he look, look, look at the elephant. The elephant, like, the hell is this? The elephant got mad and tore the damn circus up. Get these damn kids off my back. I'm done. Out. Tore up the tent and ran. We showed that a couple of weeks ago. Okay. But that's the, this is what the Bible means when it says that the earth is in mourning. Read it again. When the righteous are in authority. But the Bible says when the righteous people are in authority, the that's what the earth is waiting for. It's waiting for you. I'm going to read that next. Read. The people rejoice. The Bible says that the people of the earth will rejoice when the Israelites are ruling. Yes, they got to go into captivity. But when that's over, the, the, the commandments of the Lord is going to be all over the planet earth. And then there shall be peace on earth. Can you understand what I'm saying? So people are talking about hate and all of this. We understand that to get through peace, we got to go through war. That's the reason why the Lord is going to bring it. But what do we want? We want peace. We want peace. We want harmony. But in order to get there, the devil has to be destroyed. In order to get there, people have to die. War has to take place. That's what the Bible, that's what the war of Armageddon is about. It has to happen. So that we can have some peace on this earth. A doggone a whale got to come out the doggone water, his own habitat, to come up on the beach to die because the water is too polluted. He can't take the water no more. Birds just dropping out of the sky because of the pollution killing them. Now they're talking about EPA on the cars and us. Too late. The birds trapped in a cage. Some of them I'm taking home as a pet. Bird looking at you, man, I want to gouge your eyes out with this beak. Because he want to fly. He want to do his thing. He got wings. Think about that. A bird is born with wings. And he never get to fly. Can you, can you imagine how oppressed the bird is? Read. But Read again. When the righteous are in authority, the people rejoice. The people of the earth rejoice. Go ahead. But when the wicked bear rule. But when the wicked people are in charge. The people mourn. The whole earth is in trouble. That's the reason why Isaiah says what it says. The whole earth is at rest when this man go down in Isaiah 14. That's why it says it that way. Because that's when, it, when it's time for him to get his persecution, ain't nobody going to stop it. Because they said, no, you got to get yours. Now, give me Psalms 82. Because when the earth is all messed up, the people are messed up, the animals are messed up, they all in trouble. Isaiah, uh, Psalms 82. Let's read this. We're going to read 1 to 8 real quick. Psalms chapter 82 and verse 1. God standeth in the congregation of the mighty. He judges among the gods. 
How long will ye judge unjustly? So God standeth in the congregation of the mighty. God is our power, and he who's standing among Israel. That's what he's saying. And he judges among the gods. The gods with their small g is talking about you Israelite men. The supreme being was judging through us to keep the earth in order. Read. And accept the How long? Read the second verse. How long will ye judge unjustly? The Lord said to the Israelites, said to us, when we did not want to follow God, he says, how long will you continue to judge unjustly? Because we, begot, we became wicked. That's what the Lord is saying. Go ahead. And accept the persons of the wicked. And we've accepted the wicked of our people and the wicked of everything to just flourish all over the place. We did not establish justice. That's what the Lord is saying. Read. Say la. Verse 3. Defend the poor and fatherless. That's what we were supposed to be doing. We were supposed to defend the poor and the fatherless. Go ahead. Do justice to the afflicted and needy. We were supposed to do justice to the afflicted of our people and the needy of our people. We didn't even do that. We didn't even take care of our own kids. We got so wicked. Read. Deliver the poor and needy. Rid them out of the hand of the wicked. We were supposed to be the real gods to put this earth in order when we had the power. Read. They know not. The people don't know any better because the laws of God ain't being pushed. Neither will they understand. Neither will the people understand. Go ahead. They walk on in darkness. They, all of the people are walking in sin as if it's the glory of the Lord. That's how backwards everything is. Why? Because we're not ruling. Read. All the foundations of the earth are out of course. It literally means that everything is upside down. The, all of the foundations of the earth is upside down. Women in pants, men in dresses. I don't know how much upside down you can get. Man talking about some he's a woman and a woman talking about she's a man. I don't know how much more upside down you can get. Women lead in the house, the man is in the back like a damn mouse. I don't know how much backwards you can get. Read. I have said. Ye are God. The Lord said, I have to remind you, aren't you gods? He said, you are gods. Go ahead. And all of you are children of the Most High. So we were supposed to be ruling this planet Earth. But the whole point is, because we're not ruling, everything went to hell. Everything got turned upside down. So the Earth is mourning. The people are mourning. Your family members mourning. Everybody's mourning. Give me Romans. No, read on. Read on. Let me finish that up. But ye shall die like men. Because we did not want to deal like the Most High said. The Most High said, now you're going to die like men. And fall like one of the princes. And that's the reason why we're on the bottom. Listen. Arise, O oh God. Arise, O oh Lord. Now we're asking for the Lord to give us back our power. We're repenting. We're getting ourselves together. Come on. Judge the earth. We're asking the Lord, listen, bring that judgment and judge this earth so we can get the hell out of here. So we can finally have some peace. Go ahead. For thou shall inherit all nations. For thou, the Lord, you shall uh, inherit all the nations. Meaning all the nations are going to be forced to bow down to the Bible. That's what it means. They're going to dance to the tune of this Bible. Every knee going to bend and bow. That's what it's talking about. Everybody going to dance to the tune of this Bible. They're going to learn that record that day. Everybody going to dance to it. Talking about something, I can't bend my knees. We're going to break your knees then. That's where that rod of iron going to come from. He said, no, he going to bend. I said, go ahead, show, show me that you can't bend. No, I can bend. I said, because you see what's coming, don't you? <laughs> Give me Romans 8, 19. That's the kind of power that the Lord is going to give these gods. Gods meaning the princes of the Most High to rule this planet in righteousness. That's what the kingdom of heaven is all about. And it's going to be done right here on this earth. Read. Romans chapter 8 and verse 19. For the earnest expectation of the creature waited for the manifestation of the sons of God. For the creature was made subject to vanity, not willingly, but by reason of him who have subjected the same in hope. By reason, uh, read it again, I'm sorry. Verse 19. For the earnest expectation of the creature waited for the manifestation of the sons of God. The earth is waiting for us to manifest into being real men. The word manifest means to grow. The word manifest means to mature. The word manifest means to repent and become real men. That's what it's talking about. The earth is waiting for that. Oh, man, if I had time to go through more scriptures, I'll show you how important it is for you because you're the salt of the earth. Right. And if you have lost your, your ability to season the earth, the earth has no seasoning. And the earth is not good for nothing but to be walked up and down on. So the earth is saying, listen, will you please 
come back so that I can finally yield my strength unto the people? Romans 8 and 19, that's what I was reading. Read it again. Romans chapter 8, verse 19. For the earnest expectation. For the of, earnest expectation. Of the creature. The earnest expectation. I wanted to hop on that word earnest because we read that earlier in Hebrews 2. It said, for the earnest, we was reading it, it said that take the more earnest heed. An extreme need, understanding the importance of us not letting these words slip. So here the Bible's using the word earnest again. For the earnest expectation of the creature, meaning the earth. Everything in the earth, all of the foundation of the earth is out of course. This same earth is waiting for the manifestation of the sons of God. So the earth is pissed off. The earth is saying, will you please wake up so that I can get this devil off of me so that I can yield my strength. Like the Bible says that the, that the earth would not yield her strength under Cain. Cain is Esau's forefather. Because of the evil that, they, that he did when he killed Adam, the Most High caused the earth to not yield her strength unto Cain. So the earth ain't been yielding her strength at all. Because why? Because this same beast was going to pollute it. But when this man goes down, the pollution is going to be done away. But that's what that nuclear fire is going to do. It's a purifying agent. It's going to purify all the sickness. And we're going to start this planet Earth all over in righteousness. That's the Earth is saying, I'm waiting for that. Read it again. Romans chapter 8 and verse 19. For the earnest expectation of the creature waited for the manifestation of the sons of God. So you're being manifested. That's what Ezekiel 37 is talking about. Ezekiel 37, that you shall stand up as men, as a great exceeding army of discipline, of keeping the commandments and making sure that everyone around you keeps the commandments. That's the discipline that the Most High is looking for this kind of army here. Y'all all right? This is, what, this is where the Most High is going to step in and kill our enemies and give us the planet because we'll be fit to rule it because we will know how to deal with it. So the earth is waiting for us to grow up. Now, let me jump down. Uh, give me give me Habakkuk. Habakkuk. Habakkuk chapter 3. Give me verse 15 and 16. This is the Lord bringing judgment when he's about to bring this earth to us. To rule it in righteousness. I'm skipping some verses. I, I wanted to start at 12, but I'm going to just jump to 15 because time is running. Verse 15 to 16. Listen, yes, this sir. is what God going to do. Habakkuk chapter 3 and verse 15. Thou didst walk through the sea with thine horses. This is about the Most High. He said, the Most High in Christ and the angels. Thou didst walk, it, thou didst walk through the sea with thine horses. Come on. Through the heap of great waters. Through the heap of great nations. That's what he's talking about. Go ahead. When I heard. When I heard the power that Christ and the angels was coming with. My belly trembled. Habakkuk said, my belly trembled. Go ahead. My lips quivered. My, livers, my lips quivered. At the voice. At the voice of God just commanding power all over the place. Christ commanding power. Man, to see all of that power roll down. Jesus. Come on. Rottenness entered into my bones. Rottenness entered into the prophet's bones. And I trembled in myself. And I trembled, and I trembled in myself when I saw all this power. Go that ahead. I might rest in the day of trouble. I don't even want to be around when I see all this power go down because it's too much for my, my regular eyes. I can't handle it. Because he was showing this in Habakkuk's mind. He was seeing these things. Go ahead. When he cometh up unto the people. When Christ and the angels, like we was talking about in Revelation 7, when 144,000 is, is raised up and the one third is sealed, that's when. Men, women, and children, the ones that's going to be saved. When that happens, read it again. When, when he cometh. When he cometh up unto the people. Go ahead. He will invade them with his troops. He will invade this country with his troops, with his saucers, with his, with his chariots. That's what he's talking about. He will invade them. How many of y'all remember this game that they used to play called Space Invaders? He was always trying to make mockery of this. Independence Day. What is that all about? He got the black man playing, Will, Will Smith playing Independence Day, and he is going to be the one to fight against God 
and going to punch. When he's calling himself punching an alien in the ship, he was probably punching one of the angels. That's the subliminal message that he's sending. He goes, Negroes, yay! Not even realize what he's saying. They're saying that they're going to be independent from God's Bible. That's what they're really saying. We're going to be independent to keep ruling in wickedness, to keep our people in slavery, to keep dominance over the planet. That's what he's really saying. But the angels was coming to disrupt all of that. And he will invade them with his troops, with his troops of angels. 200 million angels are coming. That's the number that I remember re reading years ago in this Bible. Millions upon millions, thousands upon thousands is recorded in the book. And I think we did the math. It's like 200 million. What in the world is this man going to do against that? When one angel could come and land on this table, then go out the window and become big as big as the earth in a matter of less than a second. What can you do with a power like that? Something that is big as the earth one second and the next second it could come and fit in this glass. What kind of power could you deal to deal with that? That's what he's coming with, 200 million of them. I think we're going to be all right, right? You think we're going to have a problem with salvation? I think we're going to be okay. All right, so fear not, brothers. Now, hey, give me my next video. Uh, I did have more on there. Nope, it was the same thing. I says go from, uh, no, nope. go to the same video again from 9, let me see, continue playing up until 9, 12. Did we, did we stop at 9, 12? We went there? Okay, so we went beyond where I wanted to go. All right, we, we, we did it already. Um, so this man, he speaks about, can we play it again? Because there was a word that he, um, uh, well, let me just say it this way because time is running. He makes the point of saying that he is an expert, uh, authority on courts and courts use him in the courtroom to get his expert opinion. Can you believe this? So in other words, he is the, he is the, uh, he is the authority to tell what a cult is. Now, I got to bring these parts in. How much time do I got? Another 15 minutes? Okay. Give me, so I have some Jeffrey Dahmer stuff in here because he's all about that. He's, him and his people is Jeffrey Dahmer, but I'm going to get to the video. See, I had Edward Scobie. Give me the video. Give me Into Columbus. I got to skip. I'm, I'm going to do, I'm going to deal with the rest of this when I get on the show. But I, I got to read this too. I got to play this here. Give me, into Columbus. Let me just read about Timothy McVeigh. So I don't. Let me read about Jeffrey Dahmer. Put Jeffrey Dahmer up there real quick. I'm gonna just. I'm gonna end it with that. Give me. Put Jeffrey Dahmer up there. I'm gonna try to stay in point. Jeffrey. Now remember, he's supposed to be uh, an expert on 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 cultism, and he is so deceptive that he actually thinks that he could disassociate himself from people like Jeffrey Dahmer. They think that he can do this. Like Jeffrey Dahmer was some freak of nature. Like the man that shot up the Aurora Theater, the Batman dude, they, they want to put him to the side. They want to say, no, that's not us. These people all think the same way. I'm going to prove it with my, with my next video. So Jeffrey Dahmer uh, was a convicted American serial killer and sex offender, come on, who committed and murder, and, 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 whoa, 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 whoa. Who, co who committed the murder, come on, and dismemberment. So he cut up bodies of 17 men and boys. Okay, so that's what this man did. All right, and he and it said and the permanent preservation of body parts. So this is what Jeffrey Dahmer did. This is this man. I'm gonna show you that he's in agreement with this. That's Jeffrey Dahmer. But they don't say they don't say that all white folks is like this. But when one of us go and do something wrong, they say that's your whole race. Understand my point. Give me the next one. Give me, uh, who's the next character? Timothy McVeigh. Give me him. <laughs> Timothy James McVeigh was an American a domestic terrorist responsible for the 1995 Oklahoma City bombing that killed 168 people. 19 of them were children and injured more than, uh, and injured more than 680 others and destroyed one third of the Alfred Moore Federal Building. The bombing was the deadliest act of terrorism in the United States prior to the 9-11 attacks, which there's a whole nother controversy on that. And I said controversy because we know 
I already got the, I already know that that ain't the way they tell it. Okay, so I'm going to leave it at that. But um, does anybody know what church <laughs> Timothy McVeigh belonged to? He was a Christian, but they never put the faith. They never put the faith of Timothy McVeigh in when they brought this up. Okay? He went to church, a devout church man. They never brought that in. Again, showing you these people ain't worth a damn. These so-called experts. All right, come out of this. Now, let's get my video. Oh, uh, yeah. Get my video. Because I, what I'm going to make the point is that he's no different. This man is no different from Timothy McVeigh or he's no different from Jeffrey Dahmer. And he is also no different from the real Columbus, from the real Christopher Columbus. Notice I said the real Christopher Columbus. So this same expert that was speaking is just like this man. Let it, let it rip, brothers. Let them see what we're talking about. Let's talk about the man himself and what he did to the indigenous people who he found when he arrived in the New World. When Columbus set sail in 1492, he was on the hunt for gold to bring back to Europe and eventually landed on an island known as Hispaniola, which today is the home of the Dominican Republic in Haiti. Unfortunately, Columbus didn't discover much gold on Hispaniola, but he did find something as good as it, if not better human beings, people. And Columbus thought that the indigenous people that he discovered would make great slaves. Pause it. When Columbus what kind of cult is this? They celebrate Columbus Day in this country. This is what they're celebrating. So what kind of mind control are being used to make the people actually support this? And some of the people that's supporting are the very victims of the destruction that these people brought. So like I said before, you don't, have the, you don't have any kind of pulpit that you can stand on to point your filthy fingers. I'm about to say something else. I keep, I get, you know what I'm about to say, right? To point your filthy fingers at anybody <laughs> talking about a cult. Play on. When Columbus discovered the Taino indigenous people of Hispaniola, he wrote back to the Sp Spanish monarchs funding his voyage saying that they are well built with good bodies and handsome features. They do not bear arms and they do not know them. For I showed them a sword, they took it by the edge and cut themselves out of ignorance. They have no iron. Their spears are made of cane. They would make fine servants. With 50 men, we could, sub, we, we could subjugate them all and make them do whatever we want. Here there are so many of these slaves. Although they are li living things, they are as good as gold. Over time, Columbus's real actions in the Americas have been replaced by a warm and fuzzy coloring book story of a bold and brave explorer who set out to discover a new world. But in reality, as we have learned from writings of Christopher Columbus's own men, the bold explorer raped, pillaged, enslaved, and slaughtered people just to get rich. One of Columbus's cult. terrorist cult. Cult, that's terrorist cult. Go ahead. Crewman Miguel Cueno wrote about the scene when Columbus arrived in Hispaniola for the second time and thousands of Tainos, or what he referred to as Indians, came out to greet Columbus's ships. Cuneo wrote, when our caravels were to leave for Spain, we gathered 1,600 male and female persons of those Indians. For those who remained, we let it be known to the Spaniards in the vicinity that anyone who wanted to take some of them could do so to the amount desired, which was done. Bueno also wrote that he took his own sex slave, a beautiful young girl, who in his own words, quote, resisted with all her strength, end quote, leaving him with no choice but to, quote, thrash her mercilessly and rape her, end quote. Columbus eventually started up a global child sex slave trade, shipping off young Indians to all corners of the globe. He even bragged about it to a friend in a letter written in 1500 saying that a hundred Castellanos, it's a Spanish coin, are as easily obtained for a woman as for a farm. And it is very general and there are plenty of dealers who go about looking for girls. Those from nine to ten years old are now in demand. Under Columbus's rule, life for the Taino people became so bad that they resorted to mass suicide. 
25 years after Columbus had arrived in Hispaniola, the Spanish missionary Pedro Cordoba wrote that as a result of the suffering and hard labor they endured, the Indians choose and have chosen suicide. Occasionally, a hundred have committed mass suicide. The women, exhausted by labor, have shunned conception and childbirth. Many, when pregnant, have taken something to abort and have aborted. Others, after delivery, have killed their children with their own hands so as not to leave them in such oppressive slavery. Eventually, Columbus resorted to wiping out the Taino altogether. Prior to Columbus's arrival in the New World, scholars placed the population of Haiti, Hispaniola, at around one and a half to three million people. By 1496, it was down to 1.1 million, according to a census done by Bartholomew Columbus, Christopher Columbus's brother. By 1516, the indigenous population was at 12,000. And by 1542, fewer than 200 natives were alive on Hispaniola. By 1555, every single native was dead, every last one. Well, that's not, a, that's not true, because you ain't getting rid of the seed of Israel, the most high tell them. So, but you see, the, you see where these people come from. And this, this same expert that's trying to point to who cults are and all that, they're in agreement with this. Ain't that something? That is something else. That is something else. We're almost done. I'm going to end it. Hey, give me my, uh, give me my clip in the, the, uh, the audio. Let me set this up. Because as you hear, because the scriptures say that he will, the most I will cause Esau to fall on his own sword. So as you see, he's up there telling the business, actually making funny of it. It's calling the discovery. He was had a little twist to it because he know that was BS. But that's the most how causing them to fall on their own tongue. The most how going to cause a lot of that thing to happen. You got my clip, my Edward Scobie? Give me my Edward Scobie. I'm about to play that. Let me tell you what this is about. I, I'm, I'm from New York. I was living in, in, um, in Harlem, and I used to record off the radio. I used to record off the radio. This was in the 80s, I think the late 80s. Uh, like 88, 89, this was, and this professor named Edward Scobie was at the Apollo Theater. He was speaking live. And he was going, and, and, and um, Edward Scobie, he's actually Dominican, okay, uh, Simeon. He's, he's Dominican brother. And he was speaking at the Apollo Theater. And he began to tell about the horrors that happened in Haiti, about what the, what, what the French did to Haiti when they were coming in to destroy the Haitian people. And when he was, he got so much on a roll, he began to spill over into what the Spanish did, which I just saw on the screen. He was getting ready to talk about that on live radio. I was recording. All of a sudden, the transmitter said, whoop. They pulled the plug. The brother was still speaking. He didn't even realize they had pulled the plug on him. Y'all going to hear that. Okay, it's WLIB uh, AM Radio New York. Play it. Caught you in midstream. Caught you in midstream. Well, we, you, want, you were talking about Toussaint and Dessalines, who was not. We don't hear very much of Dessalines. Why is that? We don't hear about Dessalines for the simple reason that he was a he was an African through and through and through. He did not have any half measures about him because he had suffered tremendously as a slave. In fact, once. Someone asked him, why is it that you, you hate the, the whites so much? He leapt off his horse and ripped up his, ripped, up, ripped up his tunic and his shirt and everything and showed his back and his, and his front, crisscrossed with scars, blows he had, he had got. He said, the next time anyone asks me why, I hate whites like that. I will shoot him the next time. And one thing about him is that he knew very well that he was facing an enemy. He knew that. He had followed in the path of one of the great Haitian leaders we don't hear about so much, is Buchmann. Buchmann, who was the originator, he said to himself, when Napoleon, Napoleon said that he was more afraid of the words of the, of the slaves in Haiti than he was of, the, of swords, he says, mm. because the words he was afraid of is when Bookman 
and Desalin said, black this country is, and black it must become and remain. And there's only three words that they were interested in. They said it in Creole, but in English it was liberty or death. Any one of those, no other words. But we're going to make sure it will be liberty. And Desalin fought with this kind. In fact, they talk about the horrors, the things that he committed against them. But it was a time of extremes. The French did some things to the Africans in Haiti that are unbelievable even today. The kind of terrible things they did. In fact, some of their European historians even admit that when they, if you read, if you, any of you read the Rockambo papers, they are translated in English. Rockambo was the general who took over when their famous Napoleon's brother-in-law, General Leclerc, died, and he was being, he, he had been killed, his, most of his troops. They sent a man that was even worse than Leclerc, Rockambo. Rockambo said he's going to kill, he was going to kill alive every single um, African general and soldier, and he's going to turn the island back into slavery. And he began, Rockambo began by taking an African woman who was pregnant, nailing her on the ground, nailing her, putting her hands to, to, to pickets on the ground, stretching her out, naked, putting, rubbing blood on her pregnant stomach, and putting meat on the stomach and letting loose a cage of hungry dogs. I don't have to. You, you boil with horror and with hatred even now when you hear. This was a regular thing. He said what he was going to do and what he began to do to everybody. Children, every, there was nobody who was exempt from that. Man, women, and children. The same kind of thing that the Spanish did during the time of, um, of, 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 um, of uh, Columbus. The same thing they did in Hispaniola that we talk about the Spanish and all their horrors, how they killed off the Caribs and so on. They have a whole history of, 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 of genocide. Rockambo said to some... They pulled the plug. I kept it recorded because you're going to hear it come back in and she's going to announce that we were off the air. Yes. Would you like me to say that? I said, oh, by all means, why didn't you bring your bus? Why didn't you bring your air? Andy, under lots of them in New York City and sitting. We were off the air for just a minute. We are back on now, as you can hear. I'm sorry, Professor Scott. Yes, we also have... Um, Y'all heard it? Stop it. That's it. That's enough. Y'all heard it for yourselves. So you'll notice that he was making the point of saying that the same thing the Spanish did, and that's what you just heard the white man himself tell you that. So when these people talk about an occult, tell the truth. You don't have no business pointing your filthy fingers at anybody about anything. You are a, you, you so-called white folks in this country, the American system of hypocrisy is about political cultism, racism, and and terrorists, they're about all three. So how in the world could a man that's benefiting from the terrorism that his fathers did going to get up there and point his fingers at the people who are the victims of what they've done? This is the reason why I say you brothers and sisters, and some of our people are going to be deceived, even though all of this went down. Some people will hear all of this and still talk about some. this is a cult. And we just read out of the Bible crystal clear that Christ and the Most High is black. But this is an example of our people not enduring with temptation, not enduring the temptation to make it through and persevere till we get the kingdom. We used to scream black power while Haram was pushed. But at the end of the day, nothing's in vain. IUIC has been given a vision. The tents of Judah has risen. Many has attempted the mission. Minor murmuring, omitting, and missing the mark. Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark. We on Paul's mission. We out on the road, purple and gold. From Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana, Sierra Leone, 
144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling. These are how our men repented at heart. The scriptures is proof. IUIC, we deliver the truth.